Of course, we are celebrating tonight, or today, or wherever you are, our fifth year anniversary of the VR Awards. As many of you already know, it's been a difficult year for events as a whole, but collaborating with Altspace and with an amazing developer community, we're excited for what's in store today. So let's take a look back at what has been achieved throughout the year. much great stuff going on you know it's a, it's a very early very innovative space uh, and I just I can't wait to see what happens so again on behalf of everyone at Valve thank you so much for the honor of receiving this award still very early doors in VR and AR content creation so most of all of you in this room are pioneers it's around a hundred colleagues friends collaborators um, and um, it's fantastic to win this award, so thank you. Now, back to today. As the excitement builds, I'm gonna stop talking for a moment. My voice could probably do with that. And I'm gonna give an opportunity for our esteemed panelists here to introduce themselves. Miki, why don't we start with you? Hi everyone, uh, I'm Miki Colhan. I am a Chief Innovation Officer of my own company, Miki International, and an Executive XR Producer and Creative Technologist. I work across uh, primarily the music and broadcasting industry uh, from brands such as uh, MTV, BBC, Red Bull, and uh, also uh, an innovation across the stream of uh, several other types of uh, R&D strands, such as the IBC Accelerator Awards, uh, with the main verticals being in virtual reality, augmented reality, spatialized audio, real-time game engine, uh, live, live animation, and motion capture. Amazing. Tom? Hello, um, my name is Tom Fisk. I am the editor of the Immersive Wire, a twice-weekly newsletter focusing on virtual reality, augmented reality, and the metaverse. I specialize in writing about the industry. I've been following it for some time. I am delighted to be here today, and I very much look forward to exploring all these delightful finalists as well. Can I redo that? <laughs> that was great. That was literally right to the end. That was great. Elizabeth, how about yourself? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Fallow. I'm a global creative lead at a little startup called Meta. What's Meta, may you say? <laughs> um, formerly known as Facebook slash Instagram. Um, in my background, I'm a hacker and a creative technologist. I've been working specifically in the AR space, basically since I was uh, old enough to walk, um, but have been working in uh, virtual reality and meta industries and goods uh, for the last couple of years. So really happy to be here with you, all you nerds. And uh, my name is Fadi Shihimi. I'm the XR Capability Lead and the XR for Consumer Experiences Lead at Accenture. Um, I've been in the XR space since 2004, 2005, uh, where I started my uh, PhD in mixed reality for mobile applications, particularly for entertainment and advertising. Um, at Accenture, I look after the European team. Uh, from a capability, from uh, talent, from tools, skills. And I wear two hats. Uh, one hat is the uh, user-centric design hat. So try to understand the best value that the clients really want. And the technical architect hat, where I try to work with my team to find the most optimal technical solutions to deliver that value to our clients. They have a PhD in XR. 
uh, mixed reality. Yeah. You made that up. In 2004. You 2000, between yeah. 2004 and 2009, yeah. That was like TV plus radio. Back it wasn't really. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's amazing. I think we've got such a, a, a breadth of uh, experience here from so many different parts of the industry and so many different parts of the space. Now, quickly, before we get started, something for all of you at home. As I briefly mentioned before, today we're going to be giving away a brand new Oculus Quest 2 to one lucky viewer. So you need to keep your eyes peeled as throughout this pre-ceremony stream, you'll be able to spot our past year's Book of Achievement covers as lovely presented by our guests here right now. Every year, the guests come to the VR Awards and they come together to sign the covers of our commemorative Books of Achievements to celebrate the night and our growing VR community. We've kept up this tradition every year, whether virtual or physical, which means we have a collection of fantastic artwork by some of the greatest, uh, signed really by some of the greatest innovators and advocates for VR. The uh, super observant among you will just need to note down how many times you see these posters in this stream after, after this segment. These don't count right now. And once you've got your final count, head to the link in the description to enter the prize draw for that Oculus Quest 2 and codes to get some of the finest games as well. The signed artwork does look like this, so keep an eye out. Yes, like my lovely models. Uh, so keep an eye out for how many times they appear. You're work now, really well on your way. So good luck to all the entrants and I'll see the winner in the metaverse soon. So I thought I would just kick things off and ask you guys, what do you think is in store for this year uh, with the VR awards and, and I guess you know, seeing the development of the industry over the last five years as well. So I thought we could have a bit more of an exploratory talk. It's our fifth year anniversary and I'd love to, to, to go with this because I know you're just in the dark, just as our, our viewers are as well. So who, who wants to go? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's really, really interesting what we've all noticed as we've been chatting about the, the, the VR awards this year in 2021 is that, you know, obviously everything had to be, it, like the industry kind of was on pause a little bit, uh, but us, you know, as creators and technologists and engineers and developers had the chance to kind of explore even more and create, uh, I think even bit bigger, better, louder, faster, funnier within the comfort of your own sweatpants, uh, <laughs> mostly. Uh, so I think what we noticed that like, although there, there's so much really great, really rich, talented people out there and really amazing experiences that we, we've we been, you know, had the privilege to kind of investigate in for these years, this year's VR Awards. Uh, we did notice that like some of them might have not had the chance to update mm -hmm. some of the pro um, some of the projects and some of the creative and th things move so fast in this ecosystem in, in our industry. So in the last five years alone, we could probably list off like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 different devices yeah. that the, 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 the software oh. updates, the hardware updates. So as a, as a creator, you have to keep up with Yeah. Well, with I know, Fadi, we said to you, oh, we're going to explore the next, the last five years. And you went, five years? That's a long <laughs> time. Just so much. Yeah, so much to uncover in, uh, in this meeting. But if, if I want to highlight uh, maybe one thing, um, if you think about the experience of creating and developing uh, applications for VR in the last, maybe three years before now, or, or two years before, it was really a mundane job for developers and, and artists and, and, and creators in general. 
But now we are getting to a point of uh, pr proliferation where we are having loads of very innovative solutions that enable uh, authoring VR experiences at scale and at speed uh, at, at a, in a way that was not expected before. Now we're seeing more content being produced. Now we're seeing more actually large enterprises and organizations thinking about how this could be applied to them and actually thinking that it is doable because of the, such uh, uh, authoring tools. Uh, in my opinion, this is the biggest achievement in the last two years, mm -hmm. seeing these kind of platforms that accelerate and uh, scale the development and the creation of content for yeah. people. There's a reason for it though, which is that there are ex affordable devices. Because exactly. the proliferation of, of VR devices has always been the biggest stumbling block to it becoming part of the grammar of our society. So even at this point with the, the Quest 2, um, it's still too expensive for your average person to own it, um, especially when at this point it's not fundamental to sort of the fabric of society. So it's always really important that we, that we as innovators and those of us who are sort of working towards those platform developments are always thinking about democratization at the very core of it, because that way you have diversity and inclusion all the way from the developer to the user end baked into the fabric of what you're creating. Because if this is something just fancy for fancy people, like that it's not important, period. You know? I would like to follow up on that to say that over the last five years, that rate of the price deductions on those hardware has decreased very, very quickly. Um, and it's, we need to bear in mind that it's a very short space of time in comparison to most variables. Over the span of five years, we've seen the progression go so quickly. So I'm anticipating what's going to happen within the next one to two to five years from now as well. Yeah, and most actual headset developers are actually releasing their, their basic models at cost, yes. right? Because they want to make sure that people get their hands on them and try them. Because until they have that sort of fluency with the interface, you know, it's just too exotic to be commonplace. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, even looking back, right, through the VR awards and some of the things that we've seen, <clears throat> I mean, just the very first year, and, and, and in 2017 through to, to now, the progression of the content and the creativity and how people approach things for virtual reality experiences it has completely evolved and completely changed. Um, and it, it's always fascinated our team because we get to try every experience that gets submitted. Um, and so do our judges as well. But it, it's, it's, yeah, it, for me, it's been interesting just witnessing the evolution, I guess, and, and how that's progressed. I think it's down to the good folks like yourself. They XR, it's about the community, and it's about the, the XR community and the creators community, and what, where, where people are able to kind of really have open knowledge and share share learnings and be and be really really uh, open minded about it. And you know, Fathy had a great point where you a couple of years ago we might not have seen so much. Maybe it was a bit more fo too focused on entertainment, and then suddenly you do have medical and enterprise embracing things. Uh, a bit more, which I think five years ago could have been that tipping point where it does open up to lots of different sectors. And that's where it's great to have cross industry, cross uh, platform learnings as well, from which I'm sure you see a lot of that. Tom, yes, learning. certainly. Um, I find VR and broadcast to be a really interesting because there's currently a chicken and egg problem where, um, of course, people are interested in investing to virtual reality in the area, but there needs to be slightly more investment and such like before you can really keep on going. Um, but personally, what I've seen uh, for the last year or so, and will continue to see as well, is more social experiences as well. Yeah. That's one where it's self-sustaining because anything with a community aspect is more than likely to keep on expanding and growing. Mm -hmm. And even in 2020 as well, I visited a, um, a church congregation, which was an old space where people were doing like prayers and stuff in like a church because they wanted to continue that community feeling during the uh, pandemic times as well. Mm -hmm. And I just highly suspect that'll continue. Yeah, well, that replaced uh, physical meetups. So, I mean, I really, hand on heart, wish there was never a pandemic and this, of there wasn't illnesses going around. You do? But it did. I really, <laughs> really. Um, yeah, but I think it did, does give, you know, it brings people together. So I think VR and XR has had that capability to be the glue for, yeah. for, for us as, you know, as a technology and an industry, but also real in real life. and you know, morphing in one step in reality, one step in, in, in an augmented layer. Yeah, and, and probably what's interesting to me is <clears throat> five years ago, when I spoke to people about VR, most of them were coming to me talking about video games, but you're coming at this from an approach of, of enterprise and, and those kind of solutions as well, right? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, the last maybe year, year and a half has been really transformational in the way how uh, businesses and uh, companies have been really thinking about virtual reality, whether it is for training or whether it is for collaboration, yeah. as, as Mickey was saying. Well, I'm going to hold your thoughts on all of that because right. we do have an actual section about yeah. enterprise and training. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah just, just, just basically to, to, uh, to, to uh, uh, point, point out this. So uh, awareness has gone really high mm and seriousness of organizations of how this could really add value to themselves and to their employees and to their relationships with, with, with their clients and their customers has gone really beyond the point of like, is this really a hype or is this really something that is going to stand yeah. uh, against the time? And, and yeah, and, it's, and we, are, we, we got to this point of like stability and, and maturity of the technology and the ecosystem uh, in, yeah. in general. Well, how many headsets did your company just buy again? Uh, tens of thousands of headsets. <laughs> cool. <Yeah>. Tens <laughs> of thousands, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And these are sixed off headsets as well. So. Same with Bank <clears throat> of America as well. Um, yeah. Well, no, they didn't buy the headsets. They've opened access to about 50,000 headsets. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's all scaling up. So has there been anything that's caught your attention online about the event, about the VR Awards this year? It's back. It's five years. <laughs> Happy fifth anniversary. Happy fifth birthday. Um, but I think it, you know the talent out there, and it's just again in my my uh, you know I'm going to just repeat what I said at the top of the show is I, it's just so fantastic to see the creatives getting more creative. You know the technology getting a little bit more sophisticated. The pixels getting finer. Mm. Uh, you know we're able to experience it no matter where you are in the world, and a little bit you know those less barriers than normal. Yeah, I was happy about the categories. Every yeah. time that we do the awards, it feels like there's more opportunity to see where VR can really shine. Uh, and some of the entries and some of the, the categories I'm less familiar with were really outstanding. So that just shows how the needle, needle's being pushed. It's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm same here. Yeah, I, th I think uh, focusing on the creativity and the experience would really be uh, more prominent in the next coming of years, given all of the power, cloud rendering, and all the stuff that's coming. I think we're going to see more of this creative juice coming into the uh, into submissions in yeah. the future as well. He had me at cloud rendering. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and uh, the, the number that comes after the fourth G. Yeah. We could talk about that down there. <laughs> I mean, Elizabeth, you, you mentioned you're happy about the, the categories. Which categories are you most excited about? Um, I loved I loved the sort of workplace categories. I love I, I love practical executions of this kind of tech. Um, actually, all of our sort of XR products and all the XR products out there, whenever they start to get into something where you're like, oh my gosh, this, is, this has utility baked right into it. This is not something capricious. It's not something that's just playful or just fun or a vanity product. Not, not, that, not that it has been at this point, but, um, but I love um, you know, the, the demos that I saw for training therapists and stuff like that, where to me, that's sort of a beautiful crystallization of why VR is so special, because you can actually be anywhere and have a moment of intimacy with someone to, uh, to you know, do, do a crisp milk. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, I, but I love that because it's just such an incredible practical training. Um, and you can see how that could extrapolate into so many situations where we can make people actually more... Um, more powerful and more facile in their in their dreams and their careers. And most importantly, you can do it in a safe environment, exactly. so nobody mm -hmm. is there to judge you. No, you've done it wrong. You're not, you can do it again and you again and again. Exactly. Until yeah. you get to a point where you're really confident and you've mastered it at your ease, at your pace, available for you consistently anytime. Yeah. With all of this, though, empathy is in the DNA of VR. Exactly. And. And you guys, again, hit the nail on the head about, you know, having that space that we feel safe in. And a lot of times when you are in group trainings, people do feel self-conscious about things. And a lot of the topics, especially like in social impact, are very sensitive. And, they're, and But it's so important to be breaking those stigmas and helping people when they need help. And it's good that uh, virtual reality is able to do that. Yeah. Was there any, uh, obviously, we're going to deep dive into some of our finalists. <clears throat> Were there any finalists in particular that caught your attention? You're looking at me first. We're making very no, good I, eye contact. I like <laughs> um, do you know what? I did make a little. I, I, I'm only doing I, it so I don't have to talk anymore. No, that, that's it. Really <laughs> sit, my friend. Um, do you know what? I did, you know, speaking of keeping on the topic of social in, impact, um, there was this suicide prevention uh, application, and I that kind of 
gave me chills a bit because that is something that people don't talk about enough. Okay. And and reaching out. To we have to move on in I've a minute. I've got 15 so more. Super, Look at me super, super, super quick. Super um, quick. Uh, very quickly. Um, I know it sounds simple, but something like clean box, because uh, fundamentally making sure headsets are clean and to make sure that people can use them and can okay. recycle through. Something simple as what clean box is doing is very much the floating unicorn, where it's like everyone should be doing something like yep. that. Yeah. The last language one. That was wild. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, Radical SDK by uh, Masters mm. of Pi, uh, which is, uh, in my opinion, mesh in action. So it is, it is there, and you can see it, and you can uh, try it. But yeah. it also sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs>yeah um maybe i'll uh, i'll talk a little bit about the, the marketing um when we when we talk about marketing it's all about uh, uh experience and which which has to be like a creative kind of experience not necessarily just presenting products in the old way that advertising and marketing used to work but more of experiential uh, type of engagements this is where you put people into the product, where this is where you put the product into people's place, or you put the product on, on people's faces in, in the form of virtual try-ons. Uh, but also, this is where you can allow people to, uh, to, live, the, to live the story of the, of the marketing message that you're trying to, to do, rather than just let them see it or hear it or, uh, or, see, uh, or basically uh, absorb it and, and browse it. Uh, so this is uh, a, a very interesting domain at the moment. Uh, lots of big players and lots of examples that we are seeing uh, using social AR, different platforms from social AR, and uh, even using uh, location-based entertainment now that uh, that VR is going. Uh, uh, sorry, that the COVID has gone and well, hopefully it's gone. Uh, people are able to go out more often and uh, be able to experience these things. So I, I think. Uh, uh, from that perspective, uh, there is a lot that, that has evolved and changed in, in the last couple of years. Yeah. We've got a lot of marketing-focused experts here in the room as well. Um, well I know you, you wanted, you, you had a lot to talk about social uh, impact and also marketing as well, right? I, uh, yes. So, so social impact marketing, film, uh, hardware influencer, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, w when fantastically, kind of my areas of expertise li lie in the LBXR okay. uh, spaces and things like that. But like I said, we all are tied in together by the power of XR. So I was really, really excited about the categories that, that, that we're here to talk about today. So uh, yeah, social impact, again, it is what could be, you know, the most important category uh, uh, that some, some can say. And I think so many award shows uh, leave it out. So thank you for putting something like this in. Um, and it's and it, it really gives a good um, space to really showcase, you know, inclusivity, uh, diversity, accessibility, things that are, again, sometimes taboo or stigma, stigma type of topics, you know, like your suicide prevention, uh, caring for the elderly, the case workers, you know, well done to Accenture on on that piece as well. Um, but I also like that there was a bit of a tie-in, um, Sabrachi, uh, for you know the Halloween marketplace. So, okay, social impact, okay. Well, I suppose you know it has been a funky 22 months for everyone in the world, so at least that gives a little bit of a, a social impact and a positive kind of pro proactive uh, community again, bringing, bringing back the community. But, uh, but again, yeah, stand, standout ones for me, um, 
do uh, include um, the AMC for the suicide prevention and the the Rendever uh, for the name the names of them. I'm not rattling off um, all of them, but but you know the causes that they're focusing on and then the way that they were in, able to integrate what they've built uh, with the audience that they've made it for, and again really thinking about accessibility, which is so so important because it gets forgotten about all the time. So thank you. I do want to touch on Rendever because I do follow Rendever quite closely. And it seems that almost every week they're doing something new when it comes to accessibility. And it's very critical that more companies follow potentially the same steps as Rendever in order to like make sure as many people as possible can embrace technology. I should know also that when it comes to the tech, it's not just the fact that they use VR and you think it's cool or use AR and think it's cool. It's a tool which they use for a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. And the best experiences are the ones that um, aim for that purpose and is accentuated using immersive tech. Yeah. Elizabeth, what are your thoughts? Marketing, uh, enterprise, social impact? Where, where do your thoughts lie at the moment? Um, I mean, the thing I love about what you were saying about the social impact pieces, and actually what you were saying as well about leaning into sort of that, that tension in, in what product or the technology is able to do. Do you know, like, I think that we spent a lot of time waiting for those sort of horizon moments where our dream of complete, you know, 360 interactivity and our ability to teleport and all the things that we're really looking forward to will happen. But at the moment, like I thought, I love some of the case studies like the Accenture piece and like the, the suicide prevention one where it's like, this is something we can do now. And we can, we can actually do something very significant and very important with the tech as it stands. Mm. Um, in terms of marketing, you know, like I, it's, I think, it, you know, um, marketing inside VR, I think is something that's just beginning to blossom. Mm. And I think it's going to be really, really cool because to me, having all of those points of freedom and autonomy inside the metaverse will also allow you to have a different kind of conversation with brands. So I'll say more about that later, but if you think about being in control of your relationship with a brand in a much more uh, intimate and empathetic way, that'll be probably the, the, the part of the fabric of metaverse marketing. This is, this is a very, uh, very good point. And actually, um, whether we are talking about VR, whether we're talking about AR, whether we're talking about the metaverse when, when it becomes really that ubiquitous across uh, all industries, um, when we speak to clients and when we talk about these kind of experiences, particularly from a marketing or like consumer perspective, um, we always try to advise the client, if you want to transact and only focus on transactions, yeah. go online, stay with e-commerce. But if you really want to connect the point that uh, uh, Liz was talking about, the, uh, if you want to connect and build that relationship and communicate a message, uh, build that brand affinity, then you have to think away from just transacting, and all, but actually building that momentum. And these kind, of, these kind of experiences, these marketing experiences, would really, really uh, uh, make a lot of sense. Um, uh, just um, on uh, examples uh, of, of, of the submissions, there have been a number of submissions in, in the marketing campaign, and, and there is a great, great amount of work. One that really stood out for me is actually the Shibuya virtual uh, Halloween. Mm -hmm. Why it stood out? Because now, when we look at gaming platforms in the metaverse, like Roblox, Fortnite, etc., what the guys have done uh, in, uh, last year, sorry, I think it was 2019, uh, is just phenomenal. I was like, wow these guys already developed this kind of experience a year ago and now we are seeing all the brands trying to advocate it and use it and actually push push to it and they managed to get like 400,000 people into the experience which is like phenomenal right uh, compared to what they used to have in real life like 10,000 uh, people being there in in in, in physical uh, place so it's just amazing where we where we're going and the the venues for uh, for brands to build that connection and communication is going to be really promising. Because that's a great example. Of they built it, and people came. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's a proper world build. Again, because of affordable like, headsets. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> because of affordable headsets. <laughs> exactly. Affordable. I thought you said something else, but we're not going to go there. We're live on any of these films. You know, but it is that also like once upon a time, you know, there was a billboard. 
on, on, a, on a highway or motorway. And then, you know, now you're able to kind of really duplicate real world events in a virtual environment and a virtual space. But you still have that fantastic element of escapism. And, uh, you know, that we've seen uh, so much in the last, you know, 15 plus years of that product placement and those brands paying so much money to get their little bottle of whiskey in the, in the James Bond film or get this, thing. oh, look, and I'm just drinking my little not, uh, other whiskeys are available whiskey. <laughs> um, but marketing and the marketeers and virtual reality and XR uh, opportunities are becoming part of experiential. And that it's, it's, it's becoming like a proper, you know, real-time game engine, interactive, multi-platform, multi-user experiential. And that's what's so nice to see. So coming, coming off of that. Yeah. And, the, and the bouncing for your drinks example, Blackwell Rum use augmented reality with an agency mm. called Zappa for marketing yes. pubs as well. So yeah, yeah, drinks can go for like advertising in movies to just advertising in AR. Exactly. The, the transition is there. Yeah. Yes, and that's off of a, a logo image yeah. recognition, yeah. marker recognition, all kinds of things. And, and maybe just to add one thing on top of the uh, product placement. Um, we are all used to special effects in movies, right? We see fires, we see breakouts, we see sprinkles of magic coming out of, of like magical creatures. Magical artworks. Exactly. Now all of this can be applied in this medium. So rather than us just watching these special effects on TV, now actually we are experiencing them and living them and they are attached to these products. So this, this is like an, another creative medium that is really ready to explode in my opinion in, in terms of like what what sort of art, art and, and creativity we can have from, uh, from producers, from, from creatives. Uh, it's not spectacle, artists. it's visceral. Exactly. Mm. It's a natural progression for a brand to be moving into those types of platforms too. And, yeah. and a fan of that brand would expect it too. So now it's not like going, oh, look at that bottle of whiskey sitting on the counter. It's like, okay, but there, it's, it's kind of pre-programmed to have that. Um, yeah, but this, know, this is interesting to me because in the past, when I've had these kind of discussions, <clears throat> not just for the VR awards, but also for uh, events and, and panels and stuff, whenever we talk about marketing, there's always been this thing that people have brought up in the past about using marketing not as a gimmick for VR. Yep. Yes. But I'm hearing that less and less now because less people are doing that, which is quite interesting to me as well. I mean, I don't know if you share the same opinion. Like once I can a, see Elizabeth yeah, looking like, once upon mm. a time, it was probably like people spending a lot of money. Well, can I for pause for one second? Because good. your perspective is actually different, I think, probably from mine, and mm -hmm. that what we're doing is more more world building, like always on world building. If I understand your business correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it experiential VR, where it's something more temporal, I believe, is a place where brands who are willing to invest in that space, they come mm -hmm. to it often with the right place in their heart, right? Mm -hmm. Like they understand that you can welcome someone into an immersive gift. And they're curious. Too. It's a gift, yeah. right? Like you're, I'm doing this for you so that you can have a magical experience, you can have a visceral, emotional experience brought to you by my brand, not just like Warped Tour brought to you by Yahoo, you know, which right. is like uh, nobody there cares who yeah. brought it to them. They just want to be there. Um, but in, in our spaces where we're having sort of always on continuous world, world building, as well as spaces like shared spaces like Horizon mm -hmm. um, or like venues, right? Which, you know, is that William Gibson kind of like dream of what the internet was going to be. What does marketing look like there? Right, and that's what I'm really excited to see because then it'll have to have utility, it'll have to have some sort of a personalization, um, or there'll have to be something as simple as swag. And I don't want to go too far off script, but like when you think about what does something have, how does something have value in virtual space when you're always on, or if you have an avatar that's continuous and there's persistence of lifestyle across your platforms, that's when it gets really interesting. Yeah. And, and this brings with it uh, an, an, a new challenge. Um, designers uh, so far have been always engrossed into 2D flat worlds, like mm -hmm. whether it is the mobile, whether it is the web, uh, whether it is print, ads, etc. Drawing. Now, <laughs> the adding the Z di the dimension now, the depth into the equation uh, brings a lot of complexity. Not everybody is capable of thinking in that spatial uh, environment to be creative and create a set, create 
manage the occlusion, where things should be placed, how close and far, etc. Can I interrupt you? Yeah. And just add to that and say, the democratization of space is the thing that's yeah. probably the most exciting about that because you don't necessarily have to have mastered occlusion or or the structure exactly. of building in 3D, but you can do it anywhere yeah. because there's no actual space. Exactly. That is really exciting. Because right. having the space to make art has always been such a huge privilege. And you've, you got, know? you've like, got full control over that space because uh, if you think about uh, uh, a physical pop-up store, right, or a, phys uh, a pop-up uh, uh, installation in a mall or out uh, in, a, in a high street, uh, there is a lot of logistics, there is a lot of planning, etc. And yeah. it's there and it's static, right? But in a virtual world, you can have that pop-up store today something. In the evening, it's something else. Tomorrow, it's another thing. So it's constant and changing, and it's inviting and welcoming everything, every time there's something uh, fresh. So, so what I'm hearing, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> is this idea that VR experiences for enterprise, marketing, and, and even social, social impact, they extend beyond just the, the VR element of it. Right, they they extend beyond that dimension, and it's about how you can interact with it, you know, from a physical sense in the real world, through a augmented sense, and also a, a, a virtual sense, I guess. Yeah, I concur. Perfect. Yes, doctor. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you did ask, do I have this? This is, this is yeah, such an I expert panel. panel. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm glad I got it right. That's <laughs> You know, from an enterprise solution perspective, I think we've touched on quite a lot of marketing and social impact now. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing companies now, move, especially during pandemics and during this time, look towards VR as a tool to train their staff, as a tool to uh, increase productivity. I mean, what have you guys seen from, you know, just the finalists and things like that, or just in general, you know, as, as a general trend? Yeah, I mean, there's there kind of like a couple really great examples throughout all of the uh, categories that we have here and again you know it, it's really great to see the, like that that broad uh, broad range but you know where you can accidentally see some training in there somewhere but I'll, I'll go back to a training uh, for in the social impact which um, again uh, or sorry yes uh, with regards to case study and the case study workers and it's also um, it, it is that creating that safe environment, which I think really makes a big difference. Yeah. Oh gosh, I mean, I don't know if we would all be. I mean, I'm sure the awards would be happening, but I'm sure you wouldn't have had as many submissions, and it wouldn't be so top of mind. I'm sure that our company wouldn't have made the recent announcement about the change of direction. I can't speak for the company as as <laughs> a single voice, but the pandemic brought everything into focus about the need to connect across time and space. So that, and when it comes to work and collaboration, like that was critical. I mean, um, you know, when we started to first play with the virtual desktop and then we started to work with virtual meeting rooms, that sense of relief of being sort of pulling your soma away from this tiny box that had become our only source of connection uh, was really, really intense, you know? I, I, I don't know what uh, your experience is in general, but. I, I came across lots of uh, uh, like skepticism from people like, nah, what is this? I don't want to put this thing on me. Like, just yeah. please try it. Just put it and see. And the moment people put this thing in, uh, on their head, they're like, wow, what I'm is this? <laughs> and then, exactly, exactly. So, 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 so pe people start actually uh, putting aside all of their uh, uh, like, uh, guard and uh, uh, skepticism and start blending and, and playing part of this experience and accepting it as potentially new reality. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, being in a spatial environment, being in a virtual space where you see like a group of people gathering there and you and others are gathering here so you can walk past them and then hear, them, hear what they're saying like, oh, I know about this and then you can jump in. You can do that on yeah. Zoom. You can do it in, 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 in any video conferencing technology. So, so that, that simulation of the social fabric and the social collaboration and connection in the real world is just coming into this virtual world. Yes, I, uh, currently we cannot touch and we cannot shake hands and, and feel others or like smell. Maybe that will happen in the future. But yeah. for, for the time being, uh, addressing the, uh, the, the, the eyes and ears in 
beautiful ways yeah. compensate for lots of other senses. You know, during the, sorry, this is quick. So during, <laughs> during, the, during the second lockdown here in England, I sent my best friend an Oculus uh, because she was really, really suffering, you know. Um, oh. And she doesn't game, right? She's not really interested in getting into sort of the more techie stuff on there, but she literally put it on and hang out in some of those virtual meeting rooms or mm -hmm. the original spaces with the gondolas going by or the cherry blossoms blowing in the wind. And she was just like, I felt so peaceful just to not be looking at my four walls. And that's a very specific insight. But I think that we learned so much from the isolation of the pandemic and that we need to be connected and we also need to travel even just out of our four walls sure. to feel inspired and to feel human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we could keep talking about this, Sorry. this topic for, for a while, but we have lots to come. So soon to come, we will actually be speaking to one of your favorite social influencers who have made it to the finalist. We'll also be deep diving into game of the year. And of course, we're still giving away that Oculus Quest 2. So make sure to read this, the description for more details on that. This is all at the fifth year anniversary pre-ceremony stream for the VR Awards. So you were one of the kind of, I guess, lead developers behind the, the awards ceremony and, and kind of World Hop experience this year. Could you give us a bit of insight then into behind the scenes of, I guess, you know, what, what goes into making, you know, a World Hop experience like the VR Awards? A lot of work. Um, there's a lot of people involved in this. So a lot of people will come into VR and they want to do an event and they have these crazy ideas. but. Usually games and things like this that have environments take years to make. So trying to get this done in a matter of weeks or even months can be quite a challenge. I, I really think that when you see get to see these ideas come to life and the world, when you go on the world hop together, like I think that was my favorite experience when we all first got together for those meetings and started seeing these ideas and creations come to life and enjoying them together. Yeah, definitely. I think being able to see everything come to life and, and go from a, a vision through to you know, an actual like seeing it there and, and, and the completion and satisfaction of that has definitely been something that I've really, really enjoyed. Um, it is. To hear people you... laughing and enjoying it together is, you know, that's just makes it all worthwhile. So. Yeah, no, exactly. So what, what advice would you give to anyone or any tips and stuff for any other, anyone that is, you know, l trying to make worlds at the moment, maybe wants to find a career in, in development or, you know, using things like Unity, what, what advice may you give them? Don't stay so stuck to one idea that, I mean, this is just an ever changing, you know, fields. Anything can change, anything can go wrong. It's like, I think that you have to just be open to those changes and ready to adapt to whatever whatever comes your way. And, and so how did you get into, I guess, all of this and building these worlds in the first place? I bought a headset for my daughter, actually. Um, I became a single parent of, of five kids and <laughs> um, my daughter was a teenager and the rest of them were just really little and I thought it would be something her and I could do together. But um, as teenagers go, I bought the headset and one of her friends said that they didn't really think VR was cool and I could never get her to put the headset on. So I was like trying to convince her, which never is a good thing. Parents can never convince a teenager to do anything. But I put the headset on and came into alt space and, you know, thought, I'm going to be the oldest person here. And to my surprise, there were a lot of adults in here and creating such unique and cool things. And I thought I could do this and I was kind of up for a career change. And even though I had not even turned a computer on in probably 10 years, I decided to give it a whirl. I went out and bought a gaming PC and a, and a Rift at the time and just downloaded Unity, Blender, and got to work, so. And, and prior to this, did you ever have experience with, with Unity or, or Blender or anything like that? Oh, absolutely not, no. I was running Windows XP the last time I did anything, so I had a lot to learn <laughs> in a short amount of time, so. And wow, I mean, you've, you've gone on to create some really amazing stuff within all space, right? And then, you know, obviously with, we're standing in one of the environments that, that you've built for the awards as well. Yes. Yeah, so I tell people, you know, that 
I don't want people to think that they can't do this. I mean, and I, I try to encourage a lot of people. There's a lot of opportunity coming up now with the metaverse and, and things like this for people like me too, that are home with kids and an opportunity to do some work from home. And my children have been involved too. I've let them, you know, I've, I've allowed them to like help out if they want to with projects. They have fantastic ideas. It's encouraged them to also learn about programming and my son has actually made something for in here last Easter and he was so proud of himself for an app that he made and 500 people came and played it that day and his grades at school just skyrocketed too so it, this was a good fit for me. Yeah I mean so I, I just um I also just want to touch on maybe like uh you could talk us through maybe what the process looks like for when you you know you built this this world I mean uh, maybe I was saying you don't have to go into just the, the crazy detail, but <laughs> I, I, I guess just like how does the how does the thought process work? Where do you even start? Where do you end? What were some challenges yet to overcome with this space? And you know, and, and, and I guess how do you approach that kind of stuff? Well, my my process is usually to think about what the end goal is. What do you want to do here? I, I tend to focus on the interaction within a space and what that looks like and how I want people to engage with each other within a space. So usually all of the details of what needs to be here or there come into play when I just think about that sort of interaction. So generally my focus is on that. It's just the design of um, the immersiveness of what's going on within the people that are in the space and how they're laughing or, is what the overall experience is going to be like for them and what they can take away from it. And, and how, so how important do you think uh, things like the VR awards are for, for the community, for the VDXR industry? Anything that encourages people, you know, and rewards people for their accomplishment is a good thing. You know, anything positive, especially with how things have been lately in the world, I think that we could all use a little positive and encouragement in anything that we do. So. I think it's a good thing. So, of course, there's many more categories up for grabs this year, including VR education and training, and our two company-focused categories, Rising VR Company and Innovative VR Company of the Year. VR Education and Training of the Year. Rising VR Company of the Year. Innovative VR Company of the Year. It's obviously been another challenging year for many across the world. But how do you guys think that our virtual reality focused companies are doing given the climate at the moment? I think they're doing extraordinarily well. Uh, they've become extremely um, resilient um, going through the past year and a bit, and they've become all the stronger for it. What I found most remarkable is that there's a lot of companies which are adapting to be more social focused. So you've got IEL, for example, is becoming more social focused uh, as one example. And you've got also um, various others such as Lost Horizon going for entertainment. And I do think that like the theme for all these like rising and innovative companies is all about entertainment and socializing and bringing people together, which links back to your previous point about how people feel more connected in these social spaces. That's an ongoing trend. And I, just, and I do think that these innovative companies have identified the pain points that has been the last year and has thrived to some extent. Yeah. That's great. And in fact, you have a background with your, your role in, in education and training. Yeah. Um, so one of our uh, flagship offerings is immersive learning. So this is where we try to utilize uh, XR uh, to simulate environments, uh, to, to train people uh, uh, on doing their jobs, uh, whether that's uh, hard skill training, how to maintain something or how to assemble an engine or soft skills, that's more of like leadership, coaching, yes, inclusion and diversity topics, et cetera. Um, uh, when we 
when the pandemic hit, I would say most of the focus or most of the demand came from uh, soft skills kind of uh, uh, training, which requires a different way of production. Uh, at that time, it was quite difficult. You need to have like 360 video production, which was, which was difficult to maintain and, and, and grow. But as I mentioned at the beginning of, uh, uh, of the talk, that um, with, uh, with uprising uh, authoring companies, these kind of experiences are actually way better and easier to, to create at scale, and you can manipulate and change uh, at any time at ease. Um, so we work with uh, lots, of, lots of clients uh, uh, in different uh, sectors, in different industries. Uh, I would say now most of the focus has come into actually the labor, doing the thing, the hard skills. So it's not just about uh, uh, seeing a particular scenario and then you, you select the answer of yes or no, etc. It's more actually hands-on. You do something, you maintain something, you want to maintain that particular machine or that server or something, and then basically uh, you practice it. So this is now becoming, uh, I would say, uh, mainstream, uh, in my opinion, uh, globally. I do want to follow up on that to say that so many other companies doing great stuff as well. So it's make real and immerse uh, all across, as you say, uh, soft skills as well as hard skills as well. And we're going to see more and more companies step into the area because um, when it comes to enterprise VR, it is one of the strongest areas. It is the area seeing like the most healthy growth. And it's going to be the area where uh, it's going to see as much technological innovation happening too, touching on to a later category on VR headsets too. And probably the biggest challenge for all of these companies and all of the topics as well is probably, you know, hard skills, soft skills. But, um, you know, being being sure to to start be starting those skills of the development skills uh, a lot earlier because the the hardest part I think during all the pandemic was finding the right developers and hiring the right developers because so many of them were taken up mm. and uh, which is fantastic but it also is an incentive to really really incorporate um, steam and stem and coding really at a lot younger age so that way uh, those skills are part of the reading writing yeah. uh, gym classes and all schools all around the world so that way I can hire people a lot easier. That ties into a lot of the work that we're trying to do at AIXR as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> working with universities, working with exactly. schools to make sure that as this industry starts to you know, explode out, that we have the right skill sets and the right kind of people exactly. in this space as well. And, so. that, and that goes with apprenticeships and internships and work experience. And you know, again, hats off to, to the big heavy hitters like Unity and, and uh, Epic Unreal for their mega grants and things like that. And whether they are actually able to help out um, smaller studios that that put the funding to good use and mm. train train up more people that can incorporate more VR experiences for training and entertainment. So yeah, I mean, I mean, do we think that the pandemic is is a contribute or a main contributing cause to all these startups kind of thriving at the moment, or was this just bound to happen anyway? I guess. So uh, yes is the answer. So talking to a lot of companies that have found that either they had to shift their business model to tap into that market, or they needed to purely because their core business couldn't uh, function within a pandemic. So um, the pandemic had an influencing factor in their shift in services, which is why I'm interested to see how that will evolve um, post pandemic as well. Um, the impression that I've had based on talking to a lot of people is it spurred more interest in massive technologies for helping when it comes to L and D and that will likely persist from now in the future as well. I would second that actually because uh, when I started working, uh, f focusing on, on the XR industry, that's when I joined Accenture like uh, three years ago. Uh, that was before the pandemic. Uh, we had a lot of uh, inquiries, interests, etc. But clients were not that maybe sure, confident, uh, or re realistic about, uh, about uh, bringing XR into their ecosystem of technology, etc. So there was some, some doubts. But after the pandemic hit, hit uh, people started rethinking, as, uh, as Tom was saying, rethinking their business model. I mean, we cannot do this particular training by just watching uh, an instructor uh, on, a, on a video conference. Uh, we cannot bring people to a physical facility. So we need to have something else. Uh, I think the, the pandemic accelerated the adoption of this technology uh, at a rapid pace, maybe 
by three, four years, uh, well, in my and opinion. And the curiosity. Yeah. So it mm -hmm. enabled companies to like, they were always curious about this kind of thing and it gave a little bit of wiggle room to invest in some R&D and invest in yeah. you know, the, the type of applications that could be used for their companies. Trust me on that one. I've written lots and lots and lots and <laughs> lots of R&D business proposals for that. So. Well, I think this is an interesting subject to really touch on because so many of our viewers today might be coming from a video game sort of perspective on this and thinking training, education, yeah, this is something that I could see but didn't necessarily, <clears throat> I guess, understand the impact of how it could, you know, could, could work in our in our day-to-day -day lives. I mean, Tom, you mentioned some, some companies there from the, the training kind of space there. I mean, what, what kind of things have you seen them been doing at the moment that, you know, has been pretty innovative, has, has, is kind of been kind of growing and things like that because I know you, you mentioned Make Real as one, for example. Yeah, so Make Real has been going doing some great soft skills things where, let's say, you are interviewing someone or talking to someone, it teaches you the skills where you can just uh, basically learn how to engage with them, how to make sure they're fine, how to make sure that they are taking feedback on as well as they can. And that's a very immersive way of making sure you learn those skills and also it's repeatable as well. That's the key thing. Uh, so you can repeat this however many times you need. Um, and then you get more hardcore ones. Well, I know Immerse uh, did a submarine training simulator, which is <laughs> very cool. Um, and that's also like great to see as well. Touching your gaming point, that's exactly how I got into this uh, industry as well, because I love VR video games. And I went to a meetup in London called Augmented Reality mm -hmm. by a colleague called Tanya. And that's how I got into it. And I think that's how a lot of people got into it as well. And that's how we met. And that's how we met as well. Probably six years uh, ago or something. Yeah, God, that's scary. Um, <laughs> but, um, but the whole point is that, like, that's that's the, that's how the funnel was a few years ago. That may be changing now because there's been the rise of um, AR influence. People make some incredible AR effects, for example. And that's become a new funnel for people getting to immersive technology to try out things like Spark AR or um, Blipper's platform or A4's platform, um, as well as other virtual reality platforms as well. Um, just slightly wider beyond gaming, but. Other virtual platforms are available. No, of course, of course. Right. No, but, um, but what I'm saying is it's interesting that that funnel is kind of widening over the last few years, too. Well, you're also talking about the democratization of tech as well, you mm -hmm. know, because I mean, are you, I think we, we, we crossed AR and VR there for a moment, but you were talking before about sort of the ability to prototype becoming easier and faster. And then obviously when we built Spark, you know, it's free. You don't have to be able to code. There's a mobile version coming out, which is like mm -hmm. drag and drop, right? And the reason for that is that if we're going to create the metaverse together. We want to have the fingerprints of as many people on it as possible. It has to be made by everybody for everybody. Um, or else, again, like I was saying before, um, you know, it just becomes sort of elitist tech, you know, um, and it has to be um, approachable and something that people can understand the value of in their lives. And that's actually, for me, what the pandemic did specifically with things like VR, because it's very expensive still. And it, it, I mean, compared to your average production, you know, flow these days. Um, and so for your average company, you'd have to have a really, really strong advocate for it who understands the value of it to get it to happen, right? Um, but if someone's sitting at home alone on Zoom all day, they might be starting to think, oh, I get this new place, right? I see the value in my own life. Um, and that sort of adoption of new technologies through necessity was... I mean, huge for all digital industries, really. And then suddenly, with all of these uh, technologies, all of these platforms coming through, uh, that point about uh, you need to have like very specialized background in 3D yeah. programming yeah. and creative somehow vanishes. Yes, it's still needed. You need to understand these basic uh, concepts in order to be able to create. But the pace at which people can be uh, really expressive of, of, of their art and skill set, etc., really grows and becomes yeah, sure. uh, uh, surfaces very quickly. It is about the tools, though. Yep. If you, you cannot create exactly. great things without these great engines and the tools that are there, you know, Spark is amazing and all the stuff that that, that you can do it. So if like your you know your your eight year old niece can do it, but your seventy eight year old mother can do yeah. it. You know, it's yeah. like a really broad spectrum. And the other tools that we were chatting about earlier in the green room is like, you know, Tavori, rapid prototyping in AR and VR, uh, Masterpiece so, Studios, sorry. Patch XR. Yeah, I, I guess kind of like what we're saying here is it's never too late to be an innovative company in the space. It's never too late to be a startup in the space. And it's, uh, there's lots of 
avenues outside of gaming to explore and, and you know, even, you know, you sitting at home can do it as well. I'm Jake Rowell. I'm the director and executive producer of Gnomes and Goblins, as well as The Blue, which you might know from uh, various VR projects over the last five, six years. Um, I've been primarily working in the space of VR for the last six years through a company called Weaver, uh, partnering with John Favreau for Gnomes and Goblins. Uh, prior to that, I've spent a bunch of time in games and modern warfare, Call of Duty, um, uh, film, 10 years in film. so you know background in both no that's amazing so so how do you feel becoming a finalist at this year's show oh it's such an honor uh to be a part of the amazing projects uh, you know when you make this stuff you become fans of other people's work so you can learn and and grow and, and sometimes when you're making the projects you don't get a chance to play all of them but then when you finish your project you can go back and play some of the other stuff that's out there and it, it's just a a great group of uh talent that's going on. And then representing John Favreau, Weaver, Madison Wells, the entire GNG team. Uh, we're all very proud and, and appreciative of the nomination. Thank you. So, yeah, no worries. Have you been to the show before? What, what's it been like for you in the past? I have been. Um, I was there last year. So the first virtual one, uh, we were nominated last year for uh, location based product of the year uh, for the Blue Deep Rescue. Um, so going there and being a finalist for that and partaking in the ceremony and meeting people, it was really fun. I, I mean, it was different because it was virtual. It was the first time you guys were kicking the tires on the whole thing. Uh, but we got to interact with people I, I think we wouldn't normally have done. So it was really fun. No, that's really awesome. Good. So, so how, does, how does someone like yourself then who's got a background in, in some of the AAA titles find themselves immersed into the world of XR then? So I should say that when I started my career in the 90s, I started in games. It was PC games, and then I went over to console games. I worked on Final Fantasy. Then I did like a 10-year run in film, primarily up through the art ranks, um, art direction, things of that space, especially in animation. Uh, and then I transitioned back to games in 2010, and I went over and started working at Infinity Ward on Call of Duty. And when you do those type of transitions, you constantly are thinking about your medium. And you're constantly trying to figure out how to improve your skill set and improve your teams. And I started seeing, like we all did in, in what 13 and 14, this convergence around you know the XR space and primarily at that time VR. And so to me, I just wanted to explore it, experiment with it. And then we found like-minded people that wanted to do the same. And I feel like John was the same way. He just wanted to experiment in it. So that's how we found ourselves through all the other things we were doing into the XR space, which has been really fun over the last six years. So maybe you could give our uh, kind of viewers maybe just a little, you know, 30 second peek into the world of an XR developer and I guess what that looks like. I think it's pretty interesting because a lot of our, the people watching this and kind of, uh, kind of being at the show uh, today are have experienced probably uh, your, your experiences, but mm -hmm. don't necessarily know the amount of effort that goes into them. So I think that'd be really awesome to, to get an idea of. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you a little bit about two of them. My first one, and then the last one here, the latest one. Um, the first one was the blue whale encounter, which most people have done. It's when the big whale comes down and looks at you with its eye. When you do it and you don't really have that playbook, you just kind of lean back on your instincts. Right. And so what I did is I basically went back and started. I wrote a little mini script. I did some, you know, storyboarding. I did some color keys. And then what I did is I jumped into 3D and I did basically a, a cinematic of it. But I looked at it in VR and we got the basic flow of this little two minute piece. And then after we had that, it was about building a small little team. We built like five, six people on the team, not even working full time. We had people from college coming in. I mean, it was a little ragtag thing. Uh, to try to get it done and make the announcement in 2015 at GDC. Conversely, like you look at Gnomes and Goblins, that spawned off of John Favreau seeing the whale encounter and loving it, really being you know inspired by it. And he came back in and he pitched us the core of Gnomes and Goblins and he gave us what he wanted to be. Now, if you look at the, the breakdown, he was the small thing in the whale encounter. The whale was the giant. He wanted to be the giant interacting with small 10-inch uh, creatures, gnomes and goblins, basically. And he wanted to kind of flip that and work on the core of emotional content, emotional connection. 
through the eyes and mm -hmm. interacting with these characters and and again experiment in the space and so we went on essentially a five-year journey to make this product that's out now that we're uh, nominated for which is essentially a three to four hour long journey um it's your own personal hero's journey through this world and when you look at that little two minute piece and that three hour four hour piece and the time and effort that went into it the team was you know probably five times as big six times as big um you know obviously the budget but the core elements that we were exploring were the same explore immersive locations explore connectivity to a virtual character or an, a basic ai yeah um and then how do you then take all those things and wrap it back into a really good feeling experience that you can walk away from and then through that with gnomes and goblins we've also added some some game elements to the product but we didn't want it to be a game we wanted it to be really at the core of it, an emotional journey. Well, look, thanks so much for your time on this. And I'm sure that um, all of our kind of viewers are, are really interested if they haven't uh, grabbed a copy of Gnomes and Goblins already. They want to have a look at that. And all I can say from here is good luck with uh, tonight at the VR Awards. Oh, thank you very much. It's it's really great. And uh, I look forward to actually connecting with a lot of people during the, during the uh, virtual event. This year, we had a total of seven VR influencers on the finalist. And if you don't know, the VR Awards is completely independent of these particular nominations as they come directly from a panel of our media partners. Let's take a look at the lineup. VR Social Influencer of the Year. It was open to public voting and we had literally thousands of votes. Uh, which of those influencers would have got your votes? Oh, God. <laughs> you know, first of all, I like all of them. I think, you know, they're inventive. They're super, mostly like really, really passionate. The passion shows through. And I think some of them are, you know, you have, um, you know, so much knowledge in there and it does not have to be a high end production. The passion comes through that. So it's the quality over some of the uh, the bigger high-end stuff with the graphics. I don't, really don't think you need all that. That kind of takes some of it away. Um, you know, I, April Spate, you know, kind of stood out for me. Nathy, I think everybody knows. But first of all, why is it only the second year you've got this category? Because these folks have been going for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, again, thanks to the social platforms like, you know, Instagram and and they've been kind of like hidden secret nuggets in our um, in our XR and VR worlds, in my opinion. I'm going to go contrary and say they they weren't really that hidden. Uh, so the, the, like the YouTube sector, when it comes to did I say uh, they VR, were hidden? Yeah. Did um, I? Yeah. Oh, they've been kept secret by AI. XR ah, and that makes more sense. Opinion. Yes, because <laughs> because I, what I will say is like the VR sphere has been like significant when it comes to getting people interested in VR because it's been a very good way of getting people together to share the passion of the sector. And there are these YouTubers who have done extraordinarily well in reporting good content and following the sector really closely. Kaz and Chari, I'm slightly um, biased, but I do quite like them. They're you really the cool. Yeah, uh, I don't have the t-shirt, but I, I do follow them really closely. Um, but, and I also really like uh, Between Realities as well. The, the, the duo um, are really good. They interview some really cool people each week. And, and also they're like their invite list just gets longer and longer because of course they keep, they'll keep on growing and it's honestly really impressive and uh, yeah. And some of them have been going for a really, really, really long time. Yeah, like absolutely. Like from the, the very like early day headsets, probably when you were doing your PhD, someone was starting a YouTube channel. Was that your YouTube channel? That's where I used to Nope. <laughs> I wasn't focusing on VR by the way. I was focusing mostly on AR and, uh, and that side of the spectrum. Uh, on, on mobile You would have been a YouTuber in 2004. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like? suck in that. <laughs> Did you like anybody? Well, uh, I think April stood out as well for me. I'm also team April. And the, I mean, the reason for me, I don't know if you agree with this or not, is that like, I, you know, I, first of all, go nerds. I love all of you. You're amazing. Some of them have been doing it for a really long time. 
Um, but the, th- it was, it, the things that she's doing with diversity and inclusion and training mm-hmm. um, and ha- also talking about some of the issues inside the actual production space, I think is extremely timely. Uh, so go, April. And a book about teaching kids Python. Yeah, so good. How many books have you read about Python? Or you? Probably five. Not <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's also really interesting because when you also look at uh, the previous winner from last year, Thrill Seeker, you can see how his production has completely skyrocketed mm-hmm. in, in over the last year as well. I mean, you know, I think he, he, it was. I he think that award for because he's him. a winner, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was shortly after the AMA that he did, and he he said, "Oh, you know what? I, I would like to be able to set up a production company that can just do this kind of stuff." And you know, we, we've yeah. seen that progress over the last year, which is you know phenomenal to see how you know people can start off in their bedroom on YouTube doing these little small things. And I guess you know the work that they're doing for us in the space is, is quite significant in propelling it to people outside of this bubble. Which Go is- VR influencers. I think maybe uh, uh, now they've been bounded to YouTube mainly and, 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 and other social platforms. But who knows, maybe in the next couple of years or something, there will be channels on the metaverse where you don't actually just watch these influencers you yeah, actually go and meet them hang around with them, with them yeah. and watch live what they're doing and experience it for yourself yeah. rather than just like watch uh, and see. they're making a start on that already you know with the you know the avatars meeting in person and exactly. sit on, let's sit on my bean bag have you fallen asleep in vr how do you do it things like that and just learning together and talking together so and obviously you can meet them in vr sometimes as well in all these the social platforms, different areas like that, and you'll have a chance to meet hopefully a few of them that might be at the show as well tonight, today, this morning, whichever time, um, you're, wherever you are in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, I think you know it, it is interesting to see how it has changed, how it is evolving, and uh, you know I think I'm, I'm interested to see you know where it goes this year as well. Now I wanted to actually dedicate a bit of time to what has obviously been a very difficult year. Um, for out-of-home entertainment. And I know that you are particularly interested in out-of-home as well. (laughs) Um, But what I can still tell you is, despite the pandemic, that this has definitely not stopped any of the categories or finalists in this categories. Out-of-home VR Entertainment of the Year. Okay, so Mickey, let's go to you, seeing as this is your field of expertise. Uh, yes, so my bag is the site-specific, location-based LBXR. Um, I work very closely with Playlines, which is a really great uh, uh, studio. I've done lots of art of London uh, around central London and uh, the Park Playground, and list of you know VR arcades around Belgium and Holland. Um, but it was it is it was very very tricky in twenty in twenty twenty when the pandemic hit. And, so many experiential uh, uh, productions were due to go live um, at so many different locations, especially the ones that were really quite connected. So it was really hard to put all that time and money into things and then have them be delayed or not launched at all and maybe only being done as like a little mini demo. So I wasn't able to kind of physically go to a lot of them. But um, one, one that I did get a chance to go to, which is, has a much deserved nomination, is Current Rising. So it's Figment Productions are the nominee. They work very closely with the uh, Royal Opera House and uh, and uh, the Royal Opera House uh, Audience Labs, um, led by uh, uh, um, led by Annette Mies, who's uh, now at King's College, I believe. Uh, but that was a really great example of of being using something that's very uh, quite trusted a trusted traditional format, opera. Yeah. Your average opera audience is going to be quite older. Uh, specifically, and they may they may not be uh, familiar with or want to warm up to things that are of a hyper reality, where you've got virtual reality, you've got spatialized audio, you've got sensory things going on, you've got wind blowing in your face, you've got sense sense happening. And I knew that that launch was delayed a couple times in 2020, and that finally launched in 2021. So um, me and my crew were able to go down there and and check it out and. Um, also worth noting at any exp- at any type of VR that you are showcasing, whether that's at a trade show or fair or conferences or award shows or things like this, hygiene is 
number one, yeah. way before the pandemic. Hygiene is number one. And what they did really, really well is make sure that, uh, you know, the pandemic was just open, like or lockdown was opening up again. And they were able to like do safety in numbers and keep things really clean in the boxes and things like that too. But, but Current Rising stood out for me because it was uh, a multi-sensory, multi-layered, multimedia. Uh, and I really love that they utilize the word hyper-reality in a really good way. So yeah. I think that was your category, wasn't kind of, it? Yeah. yeah, I looked at it too. And the, the interesting thing when I was looking at it is, um, you know, I kept on thinking that this is a category that might go away um, and because in theory, as the metaverse becomes more rich and more detailed and we're able to teleport to more places with more freedom, the idea of traveling to a physical location and then having a VR experience there seems like it might be uh, sort of tilting away from that. At the moment, it's like you go to a place that, but then, but then it's like, what is it really actually? Because there's gravitas to spaces, right? So to me, it feels like actually it might become out of home mixed reality where you go to a space that's been curated there's there's gravity in the spot mm -hmm. there's some ability to control the actual environment like in those synesthetic kind of ways but then we're having an augmented reality experience mm -hmm. so having a heads up you know maybe a mixed reality glasses as opposed to an immersive vr or a mixture thereof right the current piece really touched me as well because I am ancient and decrepit, and I love opera. Um, <laughs> I'm a rock and roll girl, and yeah. I love opera too. But, um, but I love um, seeing you know the, the arts actually being explored through through really cutting edge technology. So kudos to them. Maybe maybe I'll touch on uh, the technicalities of delivering such work um, rather than talking about the the great work that the uh, nominees have uh, have done. The production of out of home or location based entertainment is, in my opinion, one of the most complex projects that anyone can do in VR. We've done a, a project in partnership with the National Theatre in 2019 before the, uh, before the pandemic, luckily, all kinds of limbo, which involved uh, volumetric capture. Oh, that's yeah, 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 that's very uh, cool. Volumetric capture and uh, like uh, a whole series of art production and creative thinking around the environment, around the narrative, around the, the pieces and how to transition from one to another let alone the physical setup of the tracking of the uh, to keep it to keep it safe uh, uh, hygiene uh, managing crowd space it's mm -hmm. it's <laughs> one of the most complicated so kudos to the teams who yeah. managed to de deliver and create such projects on a constant basis i, I think basis. it's it's interesting to see uh, how consumers react to at home experiences and then you know experiences that you do get to experience out of the world. Now I do want to jump straight into healthcare of the year, VR healthcare of the year, VR hardware of the year, and also VR experience of the year now. So let's take a look at who they are. VR healthcare of the year. VR Hardware of the Year. VR Experience of the Year. So let's uh, kickstart with healthcare then. What, what are some names that come to mind to you? Do you then? know what, Dan? This is another category. Kudos for keeping this in the award show. Again, right up there with that social impact and such a great example of tech for good. Using these applications and the skills, uh, hardware, software, you know, to be used for applications that will help people. I'm going to reference not just the, like the collective of the names. I really genuinely think they are all worth uh, winning and um, the blood donation kind of stood out for me. But uh, I just want to kind of reference in general, again, the importance of using these applications, again, where they all are also these cross-sector um, familiarities uh, are, are tying in, you know, with the training, with things that are might be of a sensitive issue. Um, there's a really great um, close personal showbiz friend of ours, mutual friend, that was called Professor Shafi Ahmed is his name, and he is such a world-renowned surgeon, and he's been doing a VR training between London and India and um, open heart surgery and all kinds of things and really, really pushing the boundaries of using that kind of tech for good. And that's a great example of, you know, VR in healthcare is not just for training or not just for, um, 
you know, students or creating these types of simulations. They're really, really exploring on, on putting it to the test and also pushing the boundaries with the new types of um, emerging technologies that will be built into it, like haptics and, you know, eye tracking. And, and, and um, again, when, when the power of 5G does kick in and, and you'll have that faster connectivity and the low latencies that will, could potentially save lives with a lot of these applications. Uh, mark my word. Well, really yes. well, we hope so. We want to say yeah. that. Yeah. Innovation, though, as well, when you think about it, particularly in healthcare and medical, like mm -hmm. if you have an opportunity to actually make mistakes over and over and over mm -hmm. in a safe yeah. environment, you know, I think it's a huge superpower. They're all really inspiring. No, I think so, too. And what, what I just find particularly so great to see is you do see companies like Health Scholars have been around for years and they've been innovating the space so deeply. Fundamental VR, which has been like dabbling in the area. And been safe. Safe. They won two years in a row now. And totally won two years well. in a row as well. They're yeah. doing super well. And then Make Real, which uh, shows the uh, the extent of their uh, skill base, where they can do all sorts of different areas at the same time, including healthcare. Yeah, I, I, oh, so sorry, go on. Do go on. Yeah, just, just to touch on that, uh, that point. Uh, so for me, uh, XR for Health is ad, as diverse and as wide in terms of spectrum as education is. Mm. So education, you basically, you have a spectrum of whether it is kids, whether it is employees, whether it is senior leaders, etc. the same in health. So you can have these kind of applications maybe apply to the elderly in uh, home care where they cannot travel and then suddenly they can go and visit virtual places or for like uh, uh, the example that uh, Mickey mentioned about uh, uh, remote surgeries or even you can utilize the technology for maybe uh, children hospitals we are actually working on a project currently with uh, with a Nordic hospital without revealing too much information uh, but it's aimed for uh, children who have chronic diseases who stay in hospitals for long yeah how can you leverage XR to entertain these kids and encourage them to go and walk right mm. so these kind of experiences are are I mean the limitation is the imagination right the technology is capable of doing everything it's just like how do you get that problem or that cause and how you can package the technology in a beautiful package and then deliver it to, to the audience in the right place in the right yeah. context. And a little bit under the hood there, earlier we were talking about, you know, someone that's coming from a gaming background. So many people think like, oh, VR, oh, that's just gaming. That's just this. This is just proving that there, there is like a very, you know, like a vast span across the industries and sectors. But even someone that comes from that gaming background and, you know, building in Unity and Unreal and everything could... Uh, you know, bring a really, really valuable uh, part to the team because they know UX, they know UI, they could do the mind mapping, they're yeah. thinking about the user's end journey. And usually very organized people, we say. Yeah. Yeah. And so hardware, uh, Elizabeth, I might skip past you a little bit for hardware questions. Fine. Bit of bias? No, I no. <laughs> no, I don't intend to answer them. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> hardware, how's, how's the year been for hardware in the sector? I do want to uh, talk a fair bit about this because I find it fascinating this year. So let's start with HTC doing their Vive Flow, an incredibly lightweight 180 gram headset where you can just wear it and it's really good for meditative qualities. I find it fascinating that going down to the wellness aspect when it comes to VR. And I think it, there is a subset of an audience who wants something dedicated like that in order to dip down into it. And I find it also fascinating that Vario, who usually goes to enterprise stuff, mm -hmm. now is going to more consumer end. Mm -hmm. I had a briefing about them just going, oh, they were doing the Vario Aero. How cool will that be? Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, it is really cool. They're looking into future-proofing a headset for doing eye tracking and to make sure that people, when they're doing Microsoft Flight Simulator, is the best possible yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. All of these headsets have their own niche but relevant audiences where there's an impassioned group of people who want to try them out. So this year has been fascinating for me. I'm going to stop now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's safe to say these are definitely going to be worthy nominations for the for the 2022 Absolutely. period as well. Oh yes. gosh, watch this space. You might need to put like a lot, make the list about 15 nominations. Yeah. But for me, it's about um, comfort, being comfortable. And it is about, feel, you know, because if you're, if that headset is going to be so heavy on your head, and I think, early developments of these headsets, even from the 1960s onward, if you're thinking, <laughs> or beyond that, uh, yeah. you know, it, not, are not thinking about my tiny, kooky little head, you know? Yeah. It's got a big brain, though, man! <laughs> um, you know, and it is about that being comfortable, but I really like seeing 
uh, the physical side of this hardware morph into something, you know, like the, the Vive focuses and things like steampunk and mm. things that you can mm. put in your pocket soon and take with you and, and bring your worlds with you. And I wanted to kind of like go back to when we we're talking about that out of home experience and location based elements where our worlds will be tying into I'm not sure other. if my kids would be happy to see these like very tight and small glasses because now when, when they put on the VR <laughs> they headset, cool, they feel like, they? wow, this is cool. I mean, they, they speak about it to, your to their friends. All their friends want to come to visit us to basically play VR. If I show them like small goggles, I don't think they'll be impressed. Yeah. But... It's for AR, <laughs> for, for the over 10. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, as, as well, I mean, obviously this hardware would be nothing without some of these amazing experiences that cool. we also get to see on them. Any experiences, take your, take your pick at the moment or take your fancy? Most recently for the Vive Flow, I did a meditative experience where it also guides you for breathing in and out. And that was truly very relaxing. And uh, these quieter, smaller experiences have a home in virtual reality as well. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I do think they do not need to be expansive, massive games like Half-Life Alex. They really don't. They can just be a little snippet of life, which can work really well too. And I think the recent uh, art festivals like Rain Dance Immersive, as well as uh, LFF Expander have shown that as well. And Venice even. Oh, and Venice yeah. as well, yes. There's so many of them now, aren't there? There's yeah. some really great examples from, from the, the finalists in the experience category. Um, but I feel like the connective tissue between all of them was the idea of shared experience. Um, and that's, you know, as something obviously that I feel like everyone's really excited about where it's no longer going to just be something that's super isolated, but something that you can do with real people and even possibly meeting new, new people in those experiences. So again, going back to sort of virtual community building, um, that really opening up. I, I loved the escape the box one or the escape the room one. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really clever because it just lends itself to, to VR so nicely since you could have like these magical objects you can open and stuff like that. But being able to play with people is very cool. There, there is one experience that I really liked. It, it's not exactly in the experience category, but it's uh, the one by Breakpoint One, uh, Plant Journey. Yeah, that was great. Uh, that, the, 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 the journey of the plant going throughout uh, its life and then going actually to the mo molecular level, shrinking to that level and actually learning about the plant and about its life cycle, etc. Uh, the visuals, the, the 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 effects that they've got in that environment, the way of you t t t tra transitioning from one place to another place was was really cool to me. Yes, it's not in the experience uh, um, category, but I think it has some elements that really makes it stand out in terms of uh, uh, experience design. Mm -hmm. I, I like I like the idea of meeting people, and I like the idea of that. But I am also uh, going into VR to be by myself yeah. <laughs> okay. and not talk to anyone yeah. <laughs> and different. sometimes close my eyes and, and and just like drift off and have that kind of metaphor uh, the, yeah. me, you know yeah, so, so like you're anti-meta meta <laughs> anti-meta oh no it's all about the meta <laughs> that matter i have two to be perfectly honest There's one special award that no one can nominate for. Something that's for the hard work and dedication this individual has given to the immersive industry. The Accenture VR Lifetime Achievement Award. For the fifth year anniversary of the VR Awards, it is of course going to Tom Furness. Tom was one of the early pioneers of VR and is often referenced as the grandfather of virtual reality. Much of the hard work and experiences we have today is thanks to the innovations and perseverance of Tom. Panelists, how has Tom impacted your journey into VR? Or well, you know what? He is a legend, and it's it's thanks to you know these really, really, really um, you know true engineers that are you know the the, the best engineers are going to like take something apart and put it back together, even though you don't need to. They're being curious. Um, it's pushing forward boundaries when nobody knew what he was talking about, doing things with, um, you know, human interface and um, things, things with human interface and, you know, eyes and the tracking and from the 50s and the 60s and those early days. And, and also he's an educator. So he's not only inventing things and, and engineering and changing the way that things are made or the way that applications have been 
presented not only to kind of a, a, a an aver- everyday consumer to to be aware of these types of, of things, but but also that is more tech for good. You know, if you look up tech for good, you're probably going to see Tom Furness's mm-hmm. name, and um, and I think he is he is right up there with uh, you know a well well deserved lifetime achievement award. But from what I understand, that you know he's got a, he's he never stops. Again, like a good engineer, they never ever stop learning. Uh, he never stops teaching. He teaches at a thousand different universities as well, and uh, it's just good to know that he's he's still continuing to explore those areas of virtual reality um, sensors and uh, what applications with the software into the hardware as well. So, and bravo, com- Tom. And I completely agree with that. Um, Tom's research is foundational to like the development of um, VR technologies. He invented the personal eyewear display. It's foundational, yeah. and alongside 19 other patents as well, which was linking to it too. And I think what, what, what touches me is the fact that there are lots and lots of people who talk about the virtual reality space or virtual reality space, commenting on what's happening and trying to chart where the trends are gonna go. But then you get the people who are actually building the future and building what the metaverse could look like or building what VR will look like. And then you get people like Tom, which is absolutely foundational to what everyone is standing on. And I do feel like when it comes to following what's happening in the industry, it is very much like standing on the shoulders of giants. And also, let's not forget about his mixed reality efforts as well. I feel like that, to me, was particularly interesting because he having sort of the, the forethought to imagine this layering of the real and unreal uh, it, for purposes of education and training and things like that. So, I mean, I feel like I feel like the, he made obviously with with the the amazing sort of iconic baroque head, headsets and things like that. Like that's all very exciting. But I think it's almost sort of the vision of forethought mm-hmm. to see what a what a, a world full of real and unreal objects could look like and the the purposes it could serve. That's really inspiring. Uh, I, I think, uh, from my perspective. Um, one of maybe the most outstanding achievements of Tom was actually him coming, basically creating and uh, with, with his team the, uh, the AR, uh, uh, basically helmet for the uh, for the Air Force uh, team in the 60s, around the first time when the first AR prototype came through. I, I, I'm sure everybody has seen the black and white pictures of that. AR headset that is mounted to a ceiling and you've got the researcher awesome. looking <laughs> around, right? It was around the same time, yeah. but they managed to have it in a portable format, right? In hand, in, in head, uh, um, head mounted display that is used in critical situations like uh, Air Force. So that's just phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I have, to, the time I have to highlight guys, like we, we've all tried headsets here that have, you know, caused us a little bit of motion sickness probably. Oh. Have, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we've had some, some bad experiences, but can you imagine the hardware that Tom was working with? But, you know, when, when this was being, you know, first... It would have never fit my head. Yeah. <laughs> Those pilots must have been puking. I must nice. have to say. Yeah. yeah. No. But it's, it's, kudos to Tom. Exactly. And so, look, Tom uh, will be given a, an actual speech during the ceremony show uh, in, in virtual reality. So if you want to check that out and, and hear from the man himself, then make sure to tune in later on for the ceremony. Um, so look, I, I thought the first thing that we would do is say congratulations on being a finalist at this year's VR Awards. Um, I just wanted to get your, your views on it. How do you guys feel? Well, I, I think it's a kind of honor to be uh, amongst uh, the other uh, VR influencers, all uh, great creators and friends as well. So we're excited to be part of this. Yeah, I definitely yeah. agree. <laughs> so, so what are some of the things that, I mean, um, Obviously, this year we're actually celebrating our fifth year anniversary of, of the, the show. Um, I'm interested to get your view on what are some of the, the biggest things that you know you you've seen around the awards, or also I guess just in general over the last you know it's been it's been a very long time, and I guess this industry has moved quite fast. I think we've grown really fast in the past five years. I think the year has definitely flown by for us. I mean, the beginning was more like. Uh, games i think every every vr game was felt new felt amazing because it was in vr instead of on a flat screen and then we quickly shifted to getting more hardware standard on vr and everything uh, and i'm seeing that now again like 
uh, maybe a little bit less content focused, but more hardware focused. We're seeing like a lot of advancements in hardware, where hardware is getting, I think, tinier, comfier, and um, also we're getting new tech like eye tracking and maybe more like face tracking. It's getting more social, I think, getting more immersive. What do you think? Yeah, same. Yeah. Like it's a more, um, for, for consumers as well, uh, it's uh, easier to get now. It's easier to, uh, yeah, I see more people with headsets and I like that. Yeah, yeah, I think there's like more use cases now too. Yeah, working out, lots of like or friends. They they are not gamers at all, but they are using VR to work out, for example, which is pretty uh, pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> but also like uh, at the, tr the VR treadmill. I think we have it right here. Or actually on your side. <laughs> that thing okay. came out as well. So that kind of <laughs> that's also really fun because with that you can walk in VR and run and everything. I think all VR gamers are gonna be really ripped later on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome yeah i think it's interesting as well because because a lot of the work that we do at the academy is is around how do we talk about things outside of video games for example and there's this whole world to explore when it comes to to virtual uh, reality um obviously as well like with the space grown so much have you guys noticed the change in in uh, subscribers in views in people looking at the industry is there general more excitement around xr and vr i mean how's, how's that looking i think our channel grows with uh, the vr industry kind of uh so uh when we saw it of course PC VR, it was more expensive and uh, so the industry was a little bit smaller, like not a lot of people had a VR headset, but then the Quest came out, which is of course subsidized by Meta and uh, so it's a lot more um, less expensive, a lot more affordable and we noticed that uh, because of that we also gained a lot of more subscribers and views. Uh, there's just a lot more interest in, in, in the Oculus Quest and in VR in general. So that's uh, that was pretty uh, pretty epic the past uh, two years. It's great to see how all of these knock-on effects kind of have a have a, a one centralized effect on everything. So you know, a, a hardware cost can come down, and then that means that this can grow up here, and then then more people do this, and then it, it's kind of this cycle, right, where more and more people start to get involved with the, the technology. But what, what are you what are you looking forward to most from the VR awards this year? And and I don't know if you've you've had a chance to see anything from previous years or anything like that. I mean, I'm interested to know what it, what it means to you guys and and um, for for the industry as well. I like to see awards like this definitely for VR as well because um, it definitely shows it's getting bigger. Um, it uh, also people who just got into VR are able to see what it uh, VR has to offer uh, with a show like this. Like what, what sort of games are there? What uh, content creators are out there who make makes videos uh, for for you? So I, I definitely like shows like this, and I hope it stays and gets even bigger all the years after this as well. So so. Final projections as well then. Who, who do you think deserves to win Game of the Year this year? So, uh, Demio for me, for sure. <laughs> I love that game. And I definitely love party games, so that's yeah. already like a big win for me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Demio is one of the uh, top, uh, top, in my top list as well, because it's just, uh, it was so much fun to dive into that game with friends. Yeah. It was very social. They did such a good job with it. Uh, but I think my second favorite would be Star Wars Squadrons as well, which was uh, fun really fun <laughs> okay awesome so any any final words for the community any any final thoughts that you want to share join us beyond reality yeah for <laughs> sure keep on playing keep on discovering stuff in vr it has a lot to offer <laughs>
You know what? Again, this is a, uh, such a lovely category where you uh, have this great opportunity to be showcasing like really, you know, the visual graphics have been upgraded. Story has been upgraded. This is proper immersive storytelling and the art of storytelling. And it's and it's great to see some of the, some of the nominees um, come back again year after year and, and see them also in, in, in other other award shows. And uh, but things like, you know, you can't you got to always like look at the Attenborough film number one. You know, can't go wrong with David Attenborough. But um, things that stood out for me, like agents and, you know, what the National Film Board of Canada have done. They do always like lots and lots of R&D well ahead of time before they actually start to produce anything. Um, but then also Paper Birds, I think, was a really lovely story and really nice high fidelity graphics. And I think it's, again, a good, good representation of proper immersive storytelling in VR. Tom. Yes, I do want to touch on Micro Monsters as well, because mm -hmm. I did see that. And it was a great example of using that footage to bring an immersive way of showing those smaller insect like. Can things. I just ask you, Tom? Yeah, go on. Do you like insects? Um, I find them fascinating, funny enough. Okay. My, girl, my girlfriend hates spiders. Okay, did she, did she like it? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I did show it to my sister, and my sister was like, no. But okay. um, when it comes to actual details, it's a great way of learning about that smaller world. Yeah. Um, and I think Michael Monster was a great example. And then Agents, I love Agents, because it's not just a film. It's an interactive way of just mm -hmm. making sure these tiny little critters just stay alive on that planet. And it's a great example of how like VR films cannot just be a passive accepting viewing experience. It's it's one way you have some level of engagement when you get something out of it as well. Yeah, choose your own adventure. Yeah, there, having yeah. a little adventure there, yeah. And I think we're gonna see a lot of that now uh, with the ubiquity of headsets and the, the metaverse as well, where you are gonna see a lot of this creative juice coming into different mediums. That interactive, uh, the, the, the metaphor I gave earlier about marketing and, and, and advertising campaigns being livable experiences rather than browsable experiences, find themselves into the, into the movie industry. So why just produce a movie for people to, to watch? The same way you've got interactive series on Netflix, you're gonna have interactive 3D livable experiences of films and movies in the future in the metaverse, in VR, in uh, and maybe in AR. Mm. I mean, I wanna ask you this question, Elizabeth. Please. <clears throat> I ask this question to, to everyone I meet, actually, usually. Is it, is it a, no, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were, I thought that was like, yeah. If anyone who up. watched last year's show would know I asked this question as well. Is it a film or is it a game? But what, what's the divide here? Uh, I, I love that question because I don't think I think that there's there's almost no barrier anymore. And in fact, I saw some so I I saw some of the film um, submissions and I was like, this is a game. And I saw some of the game submissions. And I was like, this is a film. So so I mean, basically, I I think that the beautiful thing about the metaverse is that we don't actually have to choose anymore. I mean, I would say that the the thing about gaming is usually about leveling up, achieving some kind of skill set, um, you know, having having a particular mission or goal in mind. But that's becoming increasingly more narrative as well. Um, and also sort of the choose your own adventure kind of aspect where in the past you'd be going to the water world on Mario Kart, you know, but now you're actually turning, you know, you're, you're in a new universe with new characters and things like that. So great question. And the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Great answer. But there's still like a lot to be appreciated for something to sit back and passive and forget about life for all and not do anything. Oh, well, and I think it's so important too. I love I love all the interactors. My bag too. Sure. I love yeah. all that kind of stuff but, too. But, but that's it, also a game. Mm. You're achieving something, mm. right? And it's also a film because you're in space. Mm. If I can pivot to games actually really quickly, if you would yeah, mind. Well, I want yeah. to yeah. tell our audience, sure. please continue to debate in the comments. Like, is it a game? Is it a film? How, how do you define that? But this is a good segue. It depends which one you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good, good segue onto game because, you know, th this is the first year that we opened Game of the Year to public voting as well. Oh, cool. So we had a, a mix, a 10% vote for, for that as well. I have no idea at the moment. You have to find out in the ceremony. That's very cool. And, you know, with, with such a range of genres that are represented this year from large and small studios, I was really excited to see this, this category just always explode. Um, so I'll, I'll touch on your, your points in just a sec, but ju just a quick reminder as well, that the nomination period for the VR Awards 
is usually open, especially for this year, was open between May 2020 and July 2021. So if you don't see any newly released titles on the finalist, that's why. Okay. Yeah. And as I mentioned already, 10% of the vote was made up by the, the public this year, which was really exciting. So that yeah. is super exciting. Okay. Well, what, what were your thoughts? Well, so, so I wanted to just, just talk actually briefly about Gnomes and Goblins, right? Okay. So brought to you by famous Hollywood director. Um, so that's but just to build on that point there, taking something where he's using visual language in the past just to tell narrative stories in a linear fashion and then translating that to game engine, um, but still having sort of like this really romantic kind of immersive feel. I'm actually not going to talk too much about games because we've got some skin in the game, as it were, and I've obviously got some favorites there. I will just mention that if you're going to play the Star Wars games, one of the things I love the most about it is that you actually acquire real skills in a very, very visceral way. Like the X, the X, the, the, the sort of um, balance, the pitch and yaw of driving some of these, these uh, you know, space vehicles, you, it's unbelievably visceral and very, very close to actual real flight simulation. So super cool in terms of acquiring skills. The only other thing I'll say is, is design. One of my favorite things that's happening right now is that we're having this massive retro kind of movement. In fact, the uh, the Reddit yeah. thread 2007, like video games 2007, huge right now with VR. So it's really beautiful to see people not just always going for super fidelity, right? Mm -hmm. But actually going for Basically. some of the more, yes, yeah, yeah. some of the more like nostalgic kind of video game environments and looks and feels and interactions that we used to love so much. Mm -hmm. But how does that look actually stand up in a fully 360 immersive environment. And that's, by the way, a challenge because how do you translate something that yeah. is so familiar to people, so nostalgic, and bring it into a, a third dimension? Yeah. One, that, one of my favorite uh, games, to be honest, uh, is not that complicated or like that uh, uh, rich in terms of visuals. It's basic, as you're saying. It's uh, Cubesum. So oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a very basic puzzle game. It's a great game. But when you think, when you think about the, 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 the the critical aspects when it comes to interacting and moving things around in the 3D space so you can move around and put a piece of a puzzle in the background and the nice 3D UI that the team has designed and, and how if you hover over a button, actually the button goes up and then there's, it's not an icon, it's actually a 3D model inside <laughs> that rotates. Mm. So it's, it's very, it's nice chunky. Exactly, yeah. very nicely done. And this is my my son's favorite uh, game, by the way. Uh, okay. That's why I like it. <laughs> but uh, but seriously, it's 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 a challenge. Funny, bringing a basic you a question. Concept. Did you buy the headset for you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> or, uh, or his son's friends. Like yeah. To, to be to be honest with you, my my kids spend more time having fun. I spend time just like uh, reviewing uh, work that we are doing and, and finding feedback. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah, but also the thing about a good game. Uh, a successful game is, you know, making a, you know, again, that we're tying in empathy, we're tying in feelings, and great games will that that each person will love, all of us will love a, something different about a different type of game. And mm -hmm. but it's familiarity. Sometimes it's repetition. Sometimes it's that nostalgia bit, you know, and it will yeah. go an eight bit and things Being like that. Being <laughs> yeah. Think about it. Think about it. And it's uh, or or it could be something that games that hold a strong narrative. You know, I kind of like the quick and dirty ones. I want to just win them, except for Crossy Road. I know that's not on the show, but it annoys me. But, you know, like, I, I find myself coming back to, like, Angry Birds. Because I know it. It's cool. You got a bird. You're playing in a pig. You blow up things. Yeah. Great. I'm going to just lose myself for a while. And it's, that's quite nice. And, you know, I know that's, we're going yeah, yeah. off piece of the nominees. But the point is, is it's, it's having that opportunity to... Uh, show your passion as a developer yeah. and as a creative with the visuals, with the back end, with the gamification of things and, and exploring, you know, even even the non-zero sum type of game. It doesn't always have to be a leaderboard mm -hmm. that makes you come back to it. It's gratification, mm. isn't it? Just, and you. just touching on that point, um, this is why we do are seeing small experiences like Smash Drums and Ragnarok doing yeah. particularly well. Yeah. So that's why, because... And also, it's great to see more diversity <coughs> in like, the music scene. And some of them are great. Going to drums, it feels great in VR to be doing a little drums. It's visceral. Drums. Yeah. Yeah. It's visceral. And, um, and also... You feel it's like you've achieved something. Yeah, and it's a small like experience as well. You can just bash it out for three minutes and you're done. And so that's like exactly the kind of items that I just want to keep on going with. And yeah, yeah all these game nominations are very cool. So we, we have to move on. But I have to say, like, uh, are we seeing 
rhythm-based games finding their groove with, with VR. Oh, like that little part there. Finding their groove. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> what kind of games? Sorry. Rhythm-based games. Oh, rhythm. You know, rhythm. Got, you Not know, ribbon. Like oh, yeah, rhythm like, gymnastics. Cool. Yeah. I, that's a tilt brush. Um, I mean, rhythm-based games have been the name of the game for a really long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bop it. I agree. Think about bop. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> Girl, you are dating yourself yeah. now. Bop it. Not that Joking. Okay. Time for a rapid, yeah, you see rapid, quick fire now. Before we get uh, to end well, what has been an amazing three panels so far, um, quickly, longest time spent in VR. Go, go, go. Oh, my days. Uh, days, okay, go. Three hours. <laughs> you know, 10 hours. Ooh, okay. Mine would be three hours. Okay. Uh, I'm humble 49 minutes. Oh. Oh. I felt really, really sick enough. after okay. that. VR for work or for play? Uh, working play, playing work. Both. Okay. Both. both. Both majority play. Okay. Work. Testing. Testing. <laughs> work. And, okay, how many times have you accidentally whacked a wall in VR? Oh, ha! Hmm. Ha! Uh, uh, I'll say 12. 12? Is that the rookie numbers? No, well, no. Uh, well, I create a good uh, environment. Yeah, you have your guardian set up. Yes, my, yes. uh, not bashed a wall, but my uh, father did throw the control into the kitchen and smashed it. Oh, nice. I stepped on my goggles. <laughs> I stepped on my goggles. I have a yeah. lovely collection of scars on both of my shins okay. that makes summer wear delightful. But it's for, <laughs> it's for a good purpose. Yep. But what happened in VR? <laughs> well, I'll answer this question by telling you I was playing super hard. Okay. So you can imagine <laughs> what could happen. Okay, okay. Okay, great. Uh, amazing. Look, I hear we're just about ready now. I'm sorry, that's, that was rapid fire. Uh, wow, that was quick. That was rapid, right? <laughs> okay, look, we're, we're just about ready now to jump into Alt Space VR. So thank you everyone for joining us today. And uh, yeah, let's go live to the World Top Experience and then ceremony for the fifth International VR Awards. Oh, yes. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and welcome gentlemen, to the welcome fifth to the international, international VR award fight. AI, 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 XR. AI, XR. Let me see some Let emojis, see some in, emojis here. in here. What is going on, what is ladies, going and on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Kyle Rinder. Rinder. We're, We're here live at Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft Allspace VR. VR. We're here today, We're here to, today celebrate to celebrate creativity, creativity, creativity and innovation, and innovation in, the in the metaverse. We're going to go on, We're an, awesome go on an awesome world, awesome world Why don't you guys come, with, you guys us. come with us? Let's go! Let's go! Wow, look at, wow look at this. Look at look at these. Look at these trees over here. This is beautiful. Shout out to Shout Nira, one of the creators, creators of this world. This is absolutely breathtaking. Everybody, everybody please come down, please here, come out down here out of the lobby into the, into the tree, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen come down here. Let's jump into that portal, ladies and gentlemen. Twenty twenty one will mark the fifth anniversary of the VR Awards. The show will involve looking back on the previous years in the history of the VRA. We are blending the physical and the digital right now, live on your screens. Sam, can I ask you to press this button? And let's dance. Shout out. 
Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Uh, make sure you guys take a selfie. Welcome everyone, and make sure you directly guys take inspired a by the third VR awards. This is another poster that we're walking through, ladies and gentlemen. Particularly, there have been tons of hours in the development of this world, in particular, because of how intricate it is. We have so many Easter eggs waiting for you guys, specifically here. So please. You can only see some of these things in VR, but that's okay because we're going to walk you through the experience. Here we have Lisa, who's going to take a selfie right now. Ma'am, please take a selfie. And when she gets a picture back, she has some aliens next to her. Is that cool or what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And over here, ladies and gentlemen, we got some telescopes. Let's go ahead and walk over to these telescopes. Come on, follow me. Be shy. Now grab these telescopes, and we have two gigantic octopus out there for you to see. We've got a gigantic UFO flying up in the air. And if you're good enough, you're going to find the whale floating around with a couple avatars hanging out on it. What do you guys see out there? I see a squid. See the squid. Sir, what do you see out there? What you got out there, sir? You see anything? Yeah. Oh, look behind you. What is that? Where did that come from? Who did that? Oh, who wants to Who wants to transcend to the next level, huh? Let's go over there. Come on. Come on. I don't, I don't know where we're going, guys, but I'm pretty excited. Wow, this is crazy. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening. What's happening? I didn't, I didn't get the rundown of this. Daniel, I didn't get the rundown of this. What's happening here? What's happening? gentlemen this is one of my favorite spaces that i mean look up look up here in the entrance here we are in the upside down city you're in the upside down city this is insane this this came straight out of the fourth poster the vr awards you've got some upside down late runner cars flying around honking at us Oh my God, this is just crazy. <laughs> wow. Who wants to go through a portal with me, huh? You guys want to go through a crazy portal? You better be ready. I hope it's one o'clock in the afternoon where you are, because it's seven o'clock here. Let me see some emojis over here. Let me see some emojis if you guys are ready. Hold on. Let me see some emojis if you guys are ready. All right, let's do it. Follow me. We're about to transcend, ladies and gentlemen. Time to take the leap of faith.
Welcome to the 5th International VR Awards. I want to do it again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you guys excited? We are five minutes away from the International VR Awards of 2021. You guys excited? Throw some emojis, make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. Mm, I think I'll come back in TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like every single uh, software project. Like, hey, when's that going to be done? It's like, uh, it's about two weeks out. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's going to be five years while I'll have AR I'm contacts. I'm working on post-launch fixes while I'm at this convention, or this, oh, this awards awesome. show thing. Hey guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say that through the years, it's been insane being a part of the VR community. I've been a part of the VR community Hello. since 2016. My name is Kyle Rinder. Uh, being a part of this community is unlike anything that I've ever experienced before. We are literally paving the way of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody with a headset at home right now, please give me some emojis. You are a part of the future of building this platform of innovation. It is one of the most extraordinary things that I've ever been part of. Big shout out to Daniel at the VR Awards. We would not be here without him. Big shout out to Daniel. Throw some hearts up. Hearts only for Let's Daniel, ladies and gentlemen. Here, and I think we have a friend in common. Yeah. All those amazing worlds. Give it up to uh, Nira Layla. tonight. Oh yeah. Some of, of those awesome, awesome worlds yeah. that you guys saw. Give it up to Carnivore23. Give it up to Dargon. Were those some crazy worlds or what? Let me see some laugh emojis if you thought those were some crazy awesome worlds. If you had a good time, let me see some laugh emojis. Some funny faces. <laughs> funny faces up in the crowd. Yes. Editor at large Mike Butcher is about to host this show. Host and MC, give it up to Mike Crunch from TechCrunch. Mike Butcher from TechCrunch. <laughs> give it up. Tonight we're going to be doing the best of the best of VR, VR healthcare, education and training, enterprise solutions, social impact, rising VR innovation, out of home VR entertainment. VR marketing, VR film, VR experience, VR hardware, VR games of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to get started. Are you guys excited, ladies and gentlemen? Yay. 
We have one more minute until Mike Butcher takes over. Big round of applause for Mike Butcher tonight from TechCrunch. Let him hear it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you want to really make him hear it, drop your controllers and clap some real hands, ladies and gentlemen. This could be done. Let's make this real. I have to unmute myself for that. <laughs> now I've got to find my controllers. I also. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up to Mike Butch. To be human, does it simply mean to be alive? A means to recognize our need to survive? We often ask ourselves, what does it all mean? And where do we go next? We might not be able to change the past or tell the future, but we can certainly create a better one. Because today we cross those digital divides and ride that wave to the other side. We are the pioneers turning the gears for the next 100 years. This is the future that we create. Welcome to the fifth international. VR Awards. Please welcome to the stage your host of the National VR Awards, Mike Butcher. Please welcome to the stage. Accenture, who provided this awesome ceremony world is normally only available to their teams, training, and of, and of course, course the amazing, amazing work, work of the community alt space, space developers. developers. Thank, Thank you guys. guys. Now, now it's, it's a very, a very special, special year for AIXR AI, as it's their fifth anniversary, anniversary of running the awards, awards. and they'd like they'd to like take this opportunity to thank all the dedicated, talented <laughs> individuals who have donated, donated their, their time, time and expertise, expertise over the years to help make these, these awards possible. Now, now I'd, I'd like, like to introduce the Chief, Chief Executive, Executive of AIXR, AI Daniel, Daniel 
Pagliani. Please welcome the Chief Executive of the Academy of International Extended Reality, Daniel Colayani. Hey Mike, thanks for that. Um, look, I thought about coming up here on stage in virtual reality with a super uh, scripted uh, speech, but very much like the nature of the immersive industry and virtual reality and, and, and the world that we live in, we are really writing the rules uh, and every, every single day we're learning something new about this industry. Now, I want to tell you that hosting an award in virtual reality is by no means an easy feat. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of hurdles to go through, there's a lot of things to learn, and you know what, we're in the process of also learning what that means and what it means to be in a virtual space and a virtual environment like this. So I really do want to thank the, the literally hundreds of you that have joined us here in Alt Space VR. So like Mike said, you know, big round of applause because, you know, we're, we're making history here. This is the first time something on this scale has been done and, and we're really excited to be able to, to bring this to you. Now, with, with the awards and with everything that we do at AIXR, um, it, it wouldn't be fair for me to say that, you know what, in terms of to make this happen here, we uh, have put in uh, 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 hundreds and hundreds of dedicated hours here between uh, some fantastic individuals. So in terms of the World Hop experience that you guys managed to experience and managed to go through, I'm not sure if all of you got through it, but I hope you did. And don't worry, we'll allow you to have an opportunity to hopefully revisit that at some point. Um, that was from the hard work of the alt space community. So I really want to shout out uh, one of our developers, uh, Nira, um, which some of you may know. Uh, she did a phenomenal job on some of the worlds that you visited today. I also want to shout out Dargon and Carnivore, who have also contributed massively to some of these worlds um, as well. The other thing that I really, really want to do as well is that I, I want to let you guys know uh, into a little bit of a secret here. So I'm here in virtual reality with you, and Mike is as well, and, and so are all of you. But we have a dedicated production crew right now who are sitting inside one of our, our, our partners, Mercury Theatre, uh, making this happen. So there's literally a crew of over 20 right now producing live the show, show calling, and, and making sure that this is working. And we also have some amazing moderators. Thank you so much to the educators in VR group who also helped us bring together some amazing moderators into the space today as well. Literally, I can tell you right now, a production like this brings um, uh, uh, easily over 60 different individuals uh, live on this night to make something like this happen. So thank you again for that. Additionally as well, okay, so AIXR, and, and as, as Mike said, we uh, are celebrating five years. This, the VR Awards actually was launched five years ago before AIXR even existed. Um, and I had the privilege to co-found this as well with uh, Kelly Wright and, and uh, Gerben Van Amstel, who are two of my co-founders for the awards. Um, and I, I really wanna thank them as well for the very first year of the VR awards. I can tell you right now, these are 3 a.m. nights in our, in our little our tiny office space, uh, working overtime. And there was just three of us when we first started this. And then we grew, we've grown now to this five year to, to work with a mammoth group of people to have some amazing people part of this. So I really also wanna thank my co-founders who were there for me at, at, in the journey uh, for those many sleepless nights. You, you cannot believe the amount of time um, and effort that was spent into uh, making something like this happen. It's a year round journey, so, so thank you. And, and you know, it's a privilege as well to be able to celebrate such amazing work in this industry. With the Academy now, uh, we were able two years ago now to launch the, the Academy to be able to help further the immersive industry. I've had the privilege to work with everyone from Disney through to Facebook, through to tiny small studios all over the world. And, and that's thanks to the Academy and, and what we're able to do. So AIXR is all about bringing communities together. It's all about enabling industry, enabling growth. Uh, in the last year or so, we've worked with dozens of universities and schools to be able to, to pull together educational programs. And you know what? It all started because of this, because of the VR awards. So I can't be, be more happy about that. So we have some amazing time uh, in store for you tonight. learning the world to us because it, it's a lot of work to create worlds like this um, and uh, I also want to thank uh, all our partners over the years who have been part of this. 
So look, that's enough of me speaking. It's been a privilege to stand here in front of you. Normally I'd be in person, but you know what? This is way, way more exciting. So look, thank you again once again. Uh, and let's celebrate all of these amazing finalists that are here with us tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Fantastic. Great, uh, great speech. And uh, it's wonderful to see so many enthusiastic people here today. Let's get on with the awards. Are you ready? So, ladies and gentlemen, the first award tonight is the VR Healthcare of the Year Award. With the pandemic front and centre in everyone's mind for the last year, it's no surprise to see attention towards VR's application in healthcare settings skyrocket. So with that very much in mind, this first award celebrates those saving lives and training the next generation of healthcare professionals using VR. And the nominees are... VR Healthcare of the Year. Broad AR, Smell Revive. Health Scholars, Saving Kids Lives. Cora, The Challenge Project. Make Real, NHS Blood Transplant, Aseptic Technique VR. Numena, B Braun SSI Pathway VR. Oso VR. Cinematic VR Surgical Training Platform. Simex, Elsevier Simulation Learning System. Fundamental VR, see again. Nicolo Zago, Daily Act Software. And the winner of this category is Cinematic VR Surgical Training Platform from Oso VR. Congratulations. Would you like to come up on stage? Come on up. Thank you very much. Would you like to uh, say a few words? Yeah, I actually can't see everyone anymore. Can, can you all hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay, great. Yes, I would love to say a few words. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Fong, and I lead marketing at Oso VR. Such an honor to be here with you all and receive this award. I want to congratulate all the other finalists and Thank you to the judges and thank you for everyone here to support our amazing work in healthcare. And so for those of you that don't know us, Oso VR is a virtual reality surgical training and assessment platform. We're built by doctors, technologists, illustrators, and artists. This award truly celebrates all the work of our team at Oso VR. So thank you very much. On behalf of Oso VR, thank you for this amazing opportunity. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Congratulations again to Oso VR for winning uh, the VR Healthcare of the, of the Year. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, next up is the VR Education and Training of the Year Award. It's also been true that the pandemic has forced us to adapt and change the way that we study and learn, with online learning becoming very much the new normal. As a result, Educators have had to innovate to keep remote audiences engaged and connected. In this context, it's safe to say that VR will become even more prominent in education and training. This award celebrates those who are at the cutting edge of educating the students and workforces of tomorrow. And the nominees are... VR Education and Training of the Year. Breakpoint One, VR Plant Journey. Haggai Goldfarb Consulting, Project Origami, The Magic of Flight. Make Real, Make Real and Severn Trent, Coaching VR. Norcat, Veil VR. Orca, DHL Reach Truck Simulator. 
Psychic VR Lab, New View School. Studio Coin, Forum VR Artists of Oz. Techno Brave Asia and Eminent Air, Virtual Air Condition Installation. VRN, Virtual Reality Training for Container Glass Manufacturers. And congratulations to all the nominees and the VR Education of the Year winner is Vale VR. Congratulations. Come on up to uh, get your award and a uh, few words. Like. Wow, isn't this an amazing uh, night to be amongst uh, likewise individuals of creative and, and uh, organizations that are all developing in the VR space? I'd like to uh, take this chance to thank the, the Academy for, for hosting a night like this. Um, if it wasn't for the Academy, uh, we, we would have nights like this where we able, were able to like share our, our technologies with each other and push forward through uh, the future of VR and XR. Um, I'd like to thank NORCAT for taking the opportunity to uh, uh, invest in the studio and allow us to diversify into the XR realm and invest in us. I'd like to thank the team at NORCAT where um, our individuals uh, at NORCAT, the talent pool we have uh, allows us to develop the kind of stuff we do. I'd like to take this time to um, thank uh personally my core team uh for making this a reality andrew caustic who's the the vision and and drive of our our products of the studio our lead excel developer uh rebecca jolly our artist nick vildis and and uh andrew so sokola andre sokola uh you know our, our our trainers who deliver our programs they um they do a really good job working with students and, and making sure the training works It'd be Tom White and Chris Grimard. Um, I'd like to say thank you to our leadership team, Don Duvall, Jason Buba, Silvana D'Angelo for supporting us. And I'd like to throw an honorable mention to an old team member, Mike Doust, who was, was instrumental in developing our, our interactive systems. Uh, again, thank you for having us and I appreciate the award. Thank you. Thanks very much, Vail VR. Congratulations again. And on to the next category. This is VR Enterprise of the Year. I guess sometimes, especially in an amazing setting such as this, and let's face it, it is pretty cool, isn't it? It's easy to visualize VR's value as a source of entertainment. But of course, VR isn't solely for consumers or to be consumed. Throughout 2021, more businesses than ever before Turn to VR to improve remote collaboration and employee productivity. This next award goes to a project playing a pivotal role in transforming the way industries operate around the world. And the nominees for this category are... And the winner of the VR Enterprise of the 
of the year is Hyper Bat, the world's first VR design review over 5G from Masters of Pi. I'm hoping Hyperbat can come up and just say a few words. Go ahead. We have someone here from Masters of Pi. It would be great if you could come up and say a few words. Okay, good, thanks very much. Well, in the interest of time, we may have to move on, but get a couple more seconds, see if we can get uh, some um, representative of Masters of Pi. Uh, looks like we'll, we'll have to, we may be able to come back at some point to, to get uh, them on stage. But anyway, moving on. Next award, ladies and gentlemen, is VR Social Impact of the Year. While VR can offer escapism, it also allows us to connect to a wider community. It allows us to immerse ourselves in new perspectives in a way that is unlike any other medium, uniting people regardless of their race, creed, or religion. The VR Social Impact Award celebrates those working towards wider social good and creating positive change through immersive experiences. And the nominees for this category are VR Social Impact of the Year. Accenture, Avenues Race Equity and Child Welfare. Game Productions, Mindful VR. Geometry, Ogilvy Japan, Shibuya Virtual Halloween. GRX Immersive Labs, POV, Points of View. Rendever, Rendever Live. Material Limited, Site IT. Moth and Flame, Suicide Prevention via Ready VR. Suicide Prevention via Ready VR. Well, what a fantastic set of nominees. But unfortunately, there can only be one winner. And the winner of this category is Avenues. Race Equity in Child Welfare from Accenture. Congratulations. And I'm hoping we have a representative. Yeah, that's me. Fantastic. Go ahead. Hello. Go Absolutely. Ahead. So uh, my name is Nick Rosa, and I lead the extended reality team in Accenture Europe. And I'm here today to represent the team of Avenues and uh, in particular Molly Thierry that uh, uh, has been working on Avenues for many years now. This is the latest version that we created to overcome racial bias for social workers that have to take care of the future children that uh, are suspected to be, of being abused by their parents. 
it's extremely important for us. It's an extremely important topic that we have very close to our heart at Accenture. And we are honored to be awarded along with these esteemed finalists. And uh, we, we wanted to celebrate also everybody else that is using VR all around the world to create real social impact for everybody and is making the world uh, a better place one up at a time. So thank you very much for this award. Uh, it's, it's an honor for us to receive this at Accenture. And uh, please keep making great content and great VR. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thanks, Daniel Kolayani, for organizing this. Congratulations. Thanks very much uh, to Avenues, the Race, Equity and Child Welfare Reform, Child Welfare from Accenture. Next category in the awards, ladies and gentlemen, is Rising VR Company of the Year. Now, over the next few years, all of us in this room expect and hope to see things that make what is cutting edge techno technology today look outdated tomorrow. We only have to look back a couple of years to see what we have already achieved. This next award recognizes those trailblazers of tomorrow. So without further ado, the nominees for Rising VR Company of the Year are Some fantastic nominees there. But the winner of this category is Triple A Code. Congratulations. Come on stage if you're around, I hope, and uh, say a few words about what you're working on. say a couple of words um yes actually um <laughs> i'm not the right person uh, who stand here um but we have a couple of technical <laughs> issues oh hi i'm felix i'm the cmo of triple a code um actually andre our CEO, to talk um here all i can say is uh thank you very much for this award we are very very happy um a very new company um and we're focusing especially on the user's needs, so everything should be very, very user-centric, and this is our highest focus, and we hope we can, we can help a lot of VR users with our future tools and our tool at this moment, uh, the Switch. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, and congratulations again to AAA Code. Well done. Well, moving swiftly on, the next award is Innovative VR Company of the Year. We hear the buzzword innovation a lot in this industry and for understandable reasons. But true innovation, the practical implementation of new ideas, new ways of working, remains one of the most complex and important issues we are faced with today. Each practical innovation, we, we get a step closer to overarching concepts such as the famous metaverse, which we've heard so much about recently. This next award celebrates our industry's innovators. And the nominees, ladies and gentlemen, are... Innovative VR Company of the Year. Clean Box Technology. Dark Bay. Iora VR, Inner Space VR, Resolution Games, 
sensorium. Virtual wear. Yarn Corporation. Well, I hope you'll agree that there's some fantastic innovation going on there. But the winner of this category is virtual wear. So congratulations, virtual wear. And if uh, I'd be great to see a representative on stage, come on up. Oh, can you hear me properly? Hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody. First of all, I would like to, you know, uh, good job, guys. This is an amazing, you know, as I used to say, this is the Oscars in virtual reality. So, you know, congratulations on the great job that you've done. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we were here uh, winning the VR Enterprise Solution of the Year with Vue. Last year, we were finalists uh, with a project where uh, GE Taichi Nuclear Energy was applying the VR Solution of the Year. Today, this is like a recognition for not only for the last year, but also for the 18 years that we've been here, you know, pushing the boundaries of virtual reality. Thanks to the Academy, thanks to the judges, enjoy the night. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And congratulations again to Virtual Wear. Next category, ladies and gentlemen, is Out of Home Entertainment of the Year. Not only is Out of Home VR incredible fun, it also puts VR into the hands of everyone, enabling them to experience really high quality VR experiences without any of the usual barriers to entry. And as we so often hear, for people to get VR, really need to try it, of course. So the nominees in this category are... Out of Home VR Entertainment of the Year. Backlight Studio, Ice Cube Protocol. DIVR Labs, Meet the Dinosaurs. Figment Productions, Current, Rising. Incarna Studios, Incarna Adventure. Meet Space VR. Secret Location, Blasters of the Universe, Infinity Forever. Secret Location, Paranormal. Pest Control, Ubisoft Dusseldorf, Prince of Persia, The Dagger of Time, The Dagger of Time. Some fantastic nominees there, and I hope you're enjoying my uh, little attempts at a uh, little bit of dancing now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this category is Current Rising. Come on up and let's hear from Current Rising. Okay, looks like we can't couldn't get current rising in the room, or they've uh, able to join, unable to join. So we'll we'll move on. But congratulations again to Current Rising for winning Out of Home Entertainment. Next up is VR Marketing of the Year. Now VR has always already proven to be an invaluable and innovative marketing tool for a range of businesses. This award celebrates those that are using VR to reach new demographics and create unforgettable campaigns. And the nominees are... VR Marketing of the Year. Accenture, 
D-Wave Advantage Showcase. Geometry Ogilvy Japan, Shibuya Virtual Halloween. Hickey Co. VR Boat Show Toyota Marine World. Hickey Co. Virtual Market 5. Immersive Cast, V-ROM. Emirates and Renaissance Systemus SL. The Emirates VR Experience. And the winner of the VR Marketing of the Year Award is Shibuya Virtual Halloween. Congratulations. Well done. If a representative of Shibuya Virtual Halloween, come on up. You're welcome. Unfortunately, Shibuya Virtual Halloween didn't have a representative here today, so we will move on to the next category. VR Film of the Year is obviously a fantastic category. To build up to these awards, a post on the Oculus blog reminded us that it has been five years since a lovable little hedgehog won VR's first ever Emmy Award. Since then, We've seen winners and nominations at the Venice International Film Festival, Tribeca Film Festival, and even the Oscars. This next award recognizes those that have made the world a stand up and take notice of VR. And the nominees in this category are... VR Film of the Year. Threedar, Paper Birds. Alchemy Immersive, Micro Monsters with David Attenborough. Diversion Cinema, Strands of Mind. I Don't Love You Anymore, To Miss the Ending. La Caixa Foundation, Symphony. Transitional Forms in the National Film Board of Canada, Agents. I think you all agree those were often were incredible uh, nominees in this category. But unfortunately, there can only be one winner. And the winner of VR Film of the Year is Paper Birds. Congratulations, Paper Birds. And hopefully there's a representative who can join us on stage. Do we have a representative of Paper Birds in the house? Uh, if not, then we may move to the next category. Be great if, you, if there is somebody in the house. If not, we'll move on. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get there'll be somebody representing them later. Let's move on to the next category. This is VR Experience of the Year Award. It's experiences that truly bring VR to life. Each year, these experiences get more intuitive, and even more immersive. That's why this year, the awards were looking for projects that tested the limits of what VR is capable of, immersing us in new and unexpected worlds. The nominees in this category are Studio.
Studios and Color Ray. Future Static. Atlas V and No Ghost. Madrid Noir. Big Rock Creative. BRC VR. Cousin Films and La Poutre Les Play. The Passengers. National Film Board of Canada. The Book of Distance. Lost Eagle Studios. Getting Lost with Luke in Nature. Nowhere Media. Kusunda VR. Sensorium. Launch first performing AI DJ. And the winner of the VR experience of the year is Madrid Noir. Congratulations, Madrid Noir. Come on up, Madrid Noir. If you uh, are in the room and a few words, it'd be fantastic if you did. It looks like. Oh, well, it looks like there's Madrid Noir, isn't it? Look, just had a message from Masters of Pi. Uh, he says their PC crashed when they were being called to go on stage. Um, but we'll bring them up. If you're here, Masters of Pi, you're very welcome to say hi. Oh, hello. Hello. Go for it. Go, go, go ahead, if you're on stage, you want to say hi. So, I'm actually currently at work. I'm, uh, I'm just finishing stuff up in my lecturer's and I'm really tired. I think there's a problem with your sound. Are you able to adjust it? I Ladies think there's a little problem. To render. Oh, hi. Go ahead. Okay, well, um, I'm not getting any sound from uh, uh, my fellow person on the stage here. I'm not sure if anyone else is, but uh, perhaps we'll have a technical problem. I'd like to invite you up on stage later on. There'll be a group photo with everybody who won the awards. So if you want to uh, just uh, make your way back to the audience, we'll move to the next category. Thanks so much. Oh, congratulations to Madrid Noir for winning that award. Um, the next category, ladies and gentlemen, is VR Social Influencer of the Year. This is awarded to content creators who are producing best-in-class VR content, no matter the medium. And again, this year, we asked you to help us choose the winner. Can I just say that we have seen extraordinary engagement with this award? It really is a credit to all our finalists, how passionate their respective audiences are, it's been an honor for our team to interact with each of them. But of course, in the end, just like in Highlander, there can be only one. And the nominees in this category are... VR Social Influencer of the Year. April Spate. Between Realities VR Podcast. Cass and Cherry VR. Nathy. Fia. Thrill Seeker. 
Tyrell Wood. Well, congratulations to all the nominees. Um, I'm sure you agree. Fantastic range there. But the winner for this category is for the second year in a row. Congratulations to Thrill Seeker. Come on up if you're in the room. It'd be great to hear from you. Thrill Seeker, congratulations. If you're in the room, come and say a few words. Like we uh, throw seekers. Throw seeker, come on up. Uh, you've won the award for the second year in a row of Social Influencer of the Year. If you're in the room, come on up, throw seeker. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> so, um, yeah, unfortunately, I I uh, tried to drag my play space up there. It didn't work. But um, I'm back. <laughs> so, Great. Um, Fantastic. <laughs> okay, okay, real quick. I'll just make this, like, really quick and brief. Um, so, like, I, I want to I wanna thank people, of course. That's what's, like, what you do at these at these things. I didn't, pre I didn't prep a speech. Or anything but um i, I want to say thank you to everybody in in the whole industry in general and i'll get back to that in a second but really i what i want to do if i could possibly do it is thank every single person that has ever 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 clicked on one of my videos ever or engaged or became part of the community or helped me or or done anything uh really it's it's the fuel it's the drive and then the whenever i have more that drives better content, which drives more people that are interested in VR. But at the end of the day, as like somebody that just makes YouTube videos, I'm just a cog in the wheel. And um, that goes for every single other person that's a finalist for this influencer content creator position. April and Cass and Sherry and Nathan and Realities and Mia and Tyrell and anybody that ever, ever makes VR content, whether you are, whether you have one viewer or whether you have a million um i promise you we're all just we're all just making stuff out of passion extreme passion for vr and that's our job that's what we do but it couldn't be possible without everybody else that's here that's actually making the things and like the hardware and the software and all of this stuff that brings us together and that drives this passion it couldn't be done without you guys so please to anybody out there that is making things for vr just give it your all, make the best stuff you possibly can, because that's what fuels us to make stuff that, sh like, to share it. We did, that's all we want to do is share our love for VR. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to keep doing the absolute best I possibly can. I'm going to just be the best cog I can, <laughs> do my job and share, and keep creating, because that's what we're here for. It's the biggest strength that we've ever had, is creating things virtually. So, love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, next year, I'm hoping that some amazing standout takes this and um, learns from everything that I I've learned from and everything that we've all learned from as content creators. Thank you. Love you guys. Okay. 
Congratulations, Thrill Seeker. Fantastic, great speech. Yeah, absolutely, totally agree. It's uh, wonderful to celebrate this uh, industry and uh, see so much fantastic content uh, created. Um, moving on, VR Hardware of the Year. Now, we all know it can at times be frustrating editing and re-editing your VR projects to make them compatible with the latest headset or software update. When the incredible work of such manufacturers puts such feature-rich experiences in the hands of developers and consumers alike, it allows for all the incredible projects we have seen today. Simply put, we couldn't do it without them. So the nominees in the VR Hardware of the Year award are... VR Hardware of the Year. Facebook, Oculus Quest 2. HP, HP Reverb G2 Omnicept Edition. HTC, 5 Focus 3. Pico Interactive Europe, Pico Neo 3 Pro. Vario, XR3. Virgin Ears, XTAL Mixed Reality Module. And those were fantastic nominees in the Hardware of the Year And the winner, though, of this category is HP Reverb G2 Omnicept Edition. If you're in the room, come on up. And I'll give lots of time for people to come up if they're, uh, if to make sure they can get time to get on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a won an award, please come up also. Um, just say hi if you've uh, if you've won an award, and I'll uh, we'll go we'll run through the award winners towards the end just to make sure everybody's got an opportunity to say hi if they've won an award. For now, let's get HP Reverb G2 Omnicept Edition up. If you're in the room, what? that would be amazing. I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go go ahead. <laughs> hi. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hello. Joanna Popper. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks to the community for um, here on behalf of HP. Thank you to VR Awards, AIXR, and all the judges and everyone in the audience and Altspace, of course. This is uh, the fourth headset that HP has created. It's made in collaboration with Valve, Microsoft, Toby, with support of Jeremy Balenson from Stanford. So really a great, a great group of a group of folks building this all across all those great those great companies all across HP, HP Labs. Most important of all is all the developers and the companies working with us and building the apps on top of the great hardware. So, you know, from our early access partners like Ovation and Mimbus, Singularity University, Thea, Pixo, Cedar Sinai, and so many, so many more. That's just just a sampling of them. You know, we're so grateful for them to for in their adoption of the hardware and the really, really exciting apps that they've built on top of it for, for the community, for the developers, for the organizations. Hi, did I just disappear? Yeah, you disappeared, but we can hear you. <laughs> I'm still here. I got somehow sent to the back. I got sent back to the back of the room. But I'll continue. Ooh, uh, did you te some, teleport? It, it's uh, not intentionally. Wait, now it's taking me. All right, I'll just keep talking though. Uh, you know, this headset, if, if, if for those of you who have not gotten to try it, it has the same great resolution as the HP Reverb G2, the 2160 by 2160 per eye. It has amazing audio, the valve index. It is really comfortable like the G2. And then we added to it eye tracking, pupillometry, heart rate tracking, and face tracking. Um, it is making, which makes it known as the most you know, the, the most intelligent VR headset out there. So if you'd like to learn more about it, please reach out, please contact me. We have a great website, hp.com backslash Omnicept, or the dev site is hp.io backslash Omnicept. Um, we'd be really excited to work with you and see what, what exciting projects we can create together and help, you know, make, make an amazing application personalized and customized for your clientele. 
Um, so, you know, everyone here is working together to build the future of computing, to build out, build out the exciting future. So let's keep working together. Let's build the metaverse. And thank you, thank you, thank you again. Thanks to everyone who was involved in this in any way. The the HP family, you and let's, let's celebrate. Fantastic. Thanks so much. That's excellent. Great rundown there. Congratulations again to VR Hardware of the Year Award. HP Woo! Reverb G2 Omnicept Edition. Congratulations. Well done. Um, and let me, by the way, if you, uh, if there, if there's anyone in the room who has won an award, we'll definitely want you guys to come up on stage if you uh, did not get a chance to say hi earlier. And I'll do a little rundown of uh, the winners in shortly. But we're going to do the next category, which is VR Game of the Year Award. Um, over the years, this category has seen us celebrate compelling storylines, awe inspiring environments, and immersive gameplay. This year, for the first time, we asked you to help us choose the VR Game of the Year. And the nominees in this category are... VR Game of the Year. Archiact Doom 3 VR Edition. Electronic Arts, Star Wars, Squadrons, MWM Interactive, Mask Maker, ILM XLab, Star Wars, Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, Joyway, Stride, My Dearest, Alt Deuce, Beyond Kronos, Podemworks SAS, Smash Drums, Resolution Games, Demio. VR Factory Games, Horror Bar VR. Wanna Dev, Ragnarok. Weaver, Gnomes and Goblins. XR Games, Zombieland VR, Headshot Fever. Headshot Fever. Well, congratulations uh, uh, to all the nominees. And before I ask the winner of the VR Game of the Year uh, award, I just want to remind everybody that those of you who weren't, who might be in the room, who have won an award, and if you want to come up uh, relatively shortly, um, come on up if you uh, won an award. And the winners were Masters of Pi, Triple A Code, Current Rising. Shibuya Virtual Halloween, Paper Birds, and Madrid Noir. Just briefly again, those winners who didn't get a chance to say hi, come on up if you are in the room. Masters of Pi, Pillar A Code, Current Rising, Shibuya Virtual Halloween, Paper Birds, and Madrid Noir. But let's just hi hear there. briefly first from, let's hear the winner is Demio. Winner of the VR Game of the Year, Demio, come on up. But we have some more people, so please, if you're on, if you're a winner, come on up stage. And you can get a chance to speak and say hi. Are you Demio? Demio, the winner. Yep. Go ahead, Demio. My the co-founder and chief communication officer for Resolution Games. Uh, yeah, on behalf of the DMO team and everyone at Resolution Games, I just want to thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think it's all right. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Brady. I'm the co-founder and chief communication officer of Resolution Games. Uh, on behalf of the Demio team and everyone at Resolution, I just want to thank you for this honor. Uh, and I'll, I'd also like to uh, all fans for doing nothing without them. Um, and thanks also to the other nominees. Of course, you know, VR game releases have only gotten better over the years. This year was no exception. Um, for many of us at Resolution, you know, the idea behind Demio actually has been decades in the working you know 
we set out to make the kind of game that we really wanted to see in VR, and it's basically bringing the nostalgia and intensity that come with gathering around a tabletop with friends. Um, and I think we that this is something that we can really grow upon with Demio and other tabletop adventures in VR. Um, yeah, so, and if you're a fan of Demio, we'll have an, a, another update coming next month, and of course a lot to come in the, in the following year, so definitely stay tuned. Thanks again everyone here and uh, AIXR for putting this together. Uh, congratulations, thanks very much Demio, and I think we've got some other award winners on stage. A, a few words, go ahead. Hello there, if you can hear me, it's uh, Simon Revley here from Figment Productions. We made Current Rising with the uh, Royal Opera House this year, one of the first um, out of home attractions after the pandemic. So I uh, just want to say thank you for the award. Um, thank you to everybody on the team who uh, made such a such a great uh, experience for everybody who got to come and see at Covent Garden in London. Uh, and thanks to Innovate UK for uh, helping us get this thing funded and pull off the impossible by uh, making this happen during a, a pandemic. So um, thanks for the award. Congratulations, current uh, rising. Everyone. And we have another winner. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's uh, Masters of Pi here. Uh, so we would like to we would like to thank the um, the academy. Uh, I never we, we never thought we would actually be able to say this and it, winning a, an an academy award. But tonight we are tonight we are celebrating above all the the, the achievements of this uh, thriving community that is taking uh, immersed technology to the next level. Um, and it's really, it's really inspiring to see like all the different, all the different use cases and applications that uh, are being are being demonstrated here tonight. Um, in our case, enter enterprise solutions they don't make sense without a customer sharing our vision. So we would like to thank uh, Hyperbat, which is a joint venture between Unipart and uh, Williams Advanced Engineering. For believing in the technology and accelerating the, the digital transformation of their business, um, so like to, to thank just, just just a quick thank you to all the solution partners, British Telecom, uh, Ericsson, Nvidia, Qualcomm, and and Grid Factory, uh, for turning uh, this virtual dream into a reality. Thank you. Fantastic! Congratulations! And uh, so I think we've been managed to give an opportunity to those of you who won awards but didn't have a chance to say it earlier um and uh we'll certainly it, that, that still it still exists for uh, a little bit longer but finally ladies and gentlemen um we come to the lifetime achievement award um as i think john carmack said when winning the accenture vr lifetime achievement award in 2019 Congrats, it can seem a little premature to recognize lifetime achievement in such a nascent industry. What this award enables us to do is to truly recognize those who have got VR to where we are today, celebrating outstanding achievement outside the calendar year. To deliver this award, please welcome to the stage the Accenture Extended Reality Lead in Europe, Nick Rosa. Put your hands together for Nick. Come on on, st on stage. Nick. The protagonist and people that really built this industry from the ground up. At Accenture, we created the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award to celebrate the talents and the visionaries and the dreamers who not only envision, but also design and actually build our industry foundation and are still helping it growing. This year, we decided to look towards the academia and in particular, its research branch to award an engineer and a remarkable man that with more than 50 years of work at the edge of what at the time was seen as science fiction, has been fundamental not only in the creation of groundbreaking research and patents that are still used today on XR devices, but also to spark the intellectual curiosity in many prominent figures that are now leaders in our XR industry and in many other fields, of course. A man who dreamt about being an astronaut 
uh, whom technology invented and sharp intellect are today's modern astronaut uh, are helping today's modern astronaut to fly to train and to work in space tonight we are celebrating a titan of our industry who created not only the technology but uh, but fuel the passion and uh, the infection enthusiasm and vision resonates across all the industry and uh, uh, is, is going to resonate for many more years, we hope. It's a pleasure and an honor to assign the Lifetime Achievement Award, VR Award 2001, to Professor Tom Furness. And now we have a clip uh, contribution from some of his friends, colleagues, and students that he worked and inspired throughout his career. Put your hands together for Tom. Hi, Tom. Congratulations on your Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations to your family as well. What you've done over the course of a lifetime will help set the path and the trajectory of what we do, not just in the near future, but in generations to come. Every once in a while in life, you find that you've gotten to know one of your longtime heroes. Being in this field of VR, I was certainly aware of Tom Furness as one of the foundational people that helped bring this field to life. Imagine starting something so long ago that you had no idea where that path might lead in some distant future. But Tom had a vision, and we are the lucky recipients of that pioneering vision because it has come to pass and situated itself firmly in our human reality. We've had many meetings with this background, so wanted to bring you here, Tom, to celebrate your Lifetime Achievement Award. It's my pleasure to honor the decades of experience that you have, that you bring to this field, and also your quality of timelessness. You are someone who lives wonder and awe, and it's really been a privilege to collaborate with you, work alongside you, and witness the world through your eyes. I was one of Tom Furness's first PhD students at the University of Washington over 25 years ago. From the first day that I set foot in his lab, he has impacted my life like few other people, and I'm truly grateful for that. I was really excited to hear that Tom was going to be given this award. He is so deserving because of the amazing contributions he has made to the field of VR, dating back to the 1970s. I've known Tom since the early 1990s when I uh, studied uh, at his uh, hit lab in the University of Washington. And uh, he's the reason why I'm in the VR industry today. So, um, you know, as well as probably hundreds of other people who have been inspired and nurtured by you know, his uh, teachings. Ian Tom's presence is to be an eternal child like he is. And at the end of the day, believe that the world is beautiful and know that it's beautiful because you made it that way. Congratulations, Tom, and I wish I was there to celebrate with you in person. Thank you, Tom. Cheers to you. And Tom, congratulations on receiving this Accenture Lifetime Achievement Award. But remember, you aren't done yet. Congratulations, Tom Furness. Plus. Okay, okay. Wow, I'm speechless. What a wonderful gesture on part of this event to bring the people I love into to this setting. This is a an amazing honor, and I want to thank the Academy and Accenture and to others who've made this possible. The judges, is it, is it going? Uh, for this amazing honor, and it's, it's an honor to actually join those who have already received this award in the past. And for that matter, all of the award winners today and for the past four years. What a wonderful event this is to recognize these great contributions that are being made. I have to accept this award, however, uh, on behalf of all the cells of my body. And those cells include my beautiful wife and companion, uh, Linda, and my parents, my children, and my grandchildren, 
and those of my colleagues and mentors and students over all these years that I've worked with. You've seen a few of them uh, already. But you know, one of the things that, um, it, with, it's sort of with mixed emotions uh, to receive this award because this is, this is a Lifetime Achievement Award and, and uh, I'm not dead yet. And uh, I keep thinking, gosh, maybe I am toward the end of my life and I need to start thinking about those kind of things. But I'm reminded of the Toby Keith song, which I love a lot. It's, don't let the old man in. And there's a line in that song, it says, how would you be if you didn't know the day you were born? And I've thought about that a lot. If I didn't know the day I was born, how old do I think I would be? And I come up with 18 <laughs> because I think I'm, I'm still a kid. I'm still excited about what lies ahead. And especially to be able to work with amazing people like you. Because this is sort of a dream come true. It's sort of like the ecstasy on top of the agony that I've had over the last 55 years of birthing this technology we're using today. So, I really want to express my deep appreciation for this, but also with the request that you keep me involved, let me continue to have fun with you. And remind you of another thing that I'm trying to do right now. I started a few years ago an organization called the Virtual World Society. Go look it up. In this society, we're trying to unlock intelligence and link minds and hearts globally to lift humanity. So it has to do with the, the humanitarian uses of the technology. And one of the projects we're just getting started that we'd love for you to be participate in is what we call HomeSpark. The idea of HomeSpark is actually to build centers of learning in homes all over the world. And we're starting off with a, a pilot of 100 families globally who will provide this, we will provide this technology to them along with mentors Teach them how to build virtual worlds. Let them experience the virtual worlds, many of which you've already created. And in the end, combine those families together. Link them together. And give them problems to work on together that help solve these pervasive problems we have in our world. So thank you again for all of this. Um, I will cherish this day forever. And uh, want to wish all of you well that uh, we continue to look ahead of the emergence of what happens. So Godspeed and thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. And it's an absolute delight that you could uh, holoport into the awards this day, uh, this evening. Certainly this evening in the UK and uh, I it's uh, daytime where you are, probably. Um, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for appearing. And uh, please stay with us because we now would like to invite all of the winners on the stage. If you are part of the, uh, uh, part of the winners uh, group, then please come up, uh, up on stage. And we'll do a group photograph and a group uh, video. Obviously, this is all being recorded and live streamed. So if you won, if your company won, uh, if you won, come on up. If your project won, uh, come on up on stage so we can capture everybody uh, uh, for the awards. Come on up. on stage if you're on a walk. If you're on a 
award winner, come on stage. Come on stage if you're an award winner. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming and congratulations once again to our winners. Uh, we're now, uh, we'd now like to invite you all to our after party, which will be starting shortly. Please use the code GSD952 to join us there. And I just want to say thank you so much to everybody. Uh, thank you very much uh, to AIXR. Thank you very much to the Academy. Uh, thank you very much for having me, Mike Butcher from TechCrunch, host you guys on stage and host you guys in this amazing venue. Um, but please join us and I'm just gonna read that out again. Thank you for everyone for coming. We're gonna start our after party, which will be starting shortly. Please use the code GSD952 to join us for the after party. But from me, for now, thank you so much, and good night. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Let's grab as many pictures as we can. All right.